ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thoughts from the Movies Live today from the Union Fitness Studios located on the North Shore of Pittsburgh. Union Fitness is more than a traditional gym. It's a place where you can transform yourself from a cowboy to a spaceman based around a variety of classes, flying, falling with style, yoga, which I think Buzz does yoga like in a different one, <laughs> um, uh, fitness performance training, yoga, that kind of stuff. Uh, at Union Fitness, they believe it is their duty to hold themselves and their clients to a higher standard. Basically, you've got a friend in them. At <laughs> Union Fitness, they practice what they preach and uphold the values of a Union Fitness, the toy box community that it is. Go to unionfitness.com today and sign up for a consultation. Through Union, you won't go down the trash chute into the infirmary. The what? <laughs> So close. <laughs> so close. Got cocky. Yeah, you know. The Infernary. Justin, what yes. movie did we watch? Well, Josh, we watched what might be considered the greatest film of all time to some people. Wow. Certainly in the discussion for the greatest Pixar film of all time. Okay. Which in a legacy that includes Monsters, Inc. and Finding Nemo and Up and Wally e and all these other classics – do any of them beat the original, the OG, in Toy Story? Mm. Can you believe it's been 25 years since it's come out? 1995? 26 years since yeah. it's come out? Yeah, and uh, did not age. It's timeless. It did not age. Oh, yeah, it still it's holds up. It's timeless. Yeah. It's as good today as All it right, was All right, listen. Then. I have to do two shows before <laughs> I come in here with you fucking jabronis, so... Sorry. Anyway. No, uh, but we, we've wanted to do Pixar for a while, and we thought yeah. about doing a whole Pixar show at one point. But, uh, you know, we just came to the moment where we thought it would be a great time to do Toy Story as the pinnacle of Pixar. And we could throw in a whole bunch of fun Pixar stuff with the Toy Story episode and talking about different movies and characters and all that stuff. And it's just – I you can't not love it. And it's funny because I was watching – or I was looking at the Rotten Tomatoes – of all three Toy Stories, you know, in preparation for it. And there are there are some uh, uh, Toy Story 3 haters out there. Toy Story 1 and 2 are perfect 100%. Wow. And Toy Story 3 Toy is Story like Toy Story 2 is 100%. Oh, yeah. Wow. Toy Story 3, I think, is 98 or something. So there wow. were some people that gave it a rotten out there. Some bastards. But uh, that's a tough look. I don't know, you know who that person is. It's like the one person who gave Get Out a bad review or whatever. It's right. like 200 people love it. And then – some jerk off is like terrible movie, right? You know? Right. I don't know who that person is. I don't but, either. Uh, yeah, and I mean, uh, when I was watching Toy Story this week for the first time in a very long time, I was laughing out loud. I was yep. busting up. I was crying. I mean, it was just—it's so good. I mean, it's—it's it's incredible. It is. Uh, you know, I, I, I hype the Lion King as the best movie ever because it's the perfect hero's journey, right? This is the perfect like almost romance movie right because they hate each other at the beginning and then they come together at the end and you know what i mean I and mean, it's mm -hmm. just maybe the perfect relationship movie yeah i mean the first time i watched toy story i thought hell of a romance <laughs> um, <laughs> that cowboy and that spaceman are gonna fall in love yeah and then you forgot you were watching broke back mountain yeah <laughs> well i got 30 minutes into this before i realized it wasn't small soldiers <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? Like, Very similar. Yeah. You were so disappointed. <laughs> yeah, 15 minutes later, it wasn't the Puppet Master, and I was like, what the fuck is going oh, on? Oh, where's the Gungans? Yeah, but uh, the Gungans from Jesus Star Wars. Jesus fucking yeah. Christ. Yeah. It never ends. No, it no, no, no. Ends. What are the good guys in, in Little Soldiers? <laughs> Little Soldiers. Small Holy soldiers? shit. Small <laughs> He's uh, on a roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Gorgons, oh. yeah, I think. Gorgons, is yeah. that what it is? You're okay, he's in the neighborhood. I'm close. Yeah, yeah he's, he's in the neighborhood. <laughs> that's that's his style, though, to be close dangerously enough. close. <laughs> the Gorgonites, <laughs> Gorgonites. And the Commando Elite. There you go. Yeah. Boom. So, not small soldiers tonight, no. but equally as uh, entertaining, I yes. guess. Toy Story. <laughs> that's really <laughs> <close>. <laughs> slightly, slightly less violent. <laughs> I was going to say, poor Toy Story. But only, only slightly. <laughs> Um, Only slightly less violent. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, did everybody see this when they were seven? Oh, yeah. Zach, you saw this in theaters when you were a kid? Yeah. yeah this was – okay. Oh, I don't know. In theaters? Yeah. 
I would assume so. Probably. I don't remember. Yeah. But Mama loved me, so I think so. Probably. You know? Prob- Uh-oh. This came out the year I was born. Oh, Steph. She's that fucking young? Yeah, you're, yeah. Isn't that funny? It's like, there, oh. there. it's Toy Story's beloved to us, right, in our mm-hmm. generation. But there are probably people who are like 24, 25, who are like, I, don't, I wonder if they've even seen it, you know? If they know it. I'm sure they know it, but I'm just curious if, like, they are aware of it or, or you know, all those original Pixar movies like A Bug's Life and stuff. Hello to my beautiful wife, who has unfortunately had to put up with me watching Pixar movies for the past week. She's got bigger problems living in a fucking haunted house with yeah. you. <laughs> There's your teaser for uh, a Great Depression that drops on Monday. Um, man, it's uh, – I remember it – like, I remember seeing it in theaters, and, like, my brother had all the toys. He had Rex. He had RC. He had Buzz. He had Woody. I mean, it was it was everything. Yeah, I mean, and it's just lived up to, like you said, it's so good today as it was then. And I think, honestly, like, the animation – Back then, it's still as good today as it was then. It like really I don't watch this, and I'm like, it's not. It doesn't look dated. It doesn't. No. I don't feel like it's gotten that much There's better. There's a couple of moments where I'm like, eh, but it, but they're small. They're glancing. It's like, it's 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 a way something happens, or like it uh, like a toy kind of like jumps. But then you're like, well, it's a toy, so that could be how it moves. Like, right. That could just be part of it. Um. So yeah, I think it it does a great job of holding up like that. The topics for today. Uh, we're going to do our opening thoughts, just kind of recap our favorite parts of the movie, that kind of stuff. Then we're going to do better or worse than Pixar movies. Uh, is Toy Story the best trilogy in film history? We're going to debate that. Uh, then we're going to play some of our top peer, or Pixar tearjerker moments. Then we're going to play Guess That Quote, all Pixar quotes. That's going to be really good. Um, as poor Anastasia had to listen to me quote all of Finding Nemo today. So, Justin, if there's a Finding Nemo quote in there, I bet I get it. Um, and then uh, we've got – Zach brought this topic to the table, and I think it's going to be a really good one, is this is star-studded cast. Is this their most iconic role? Is you know is Tom Hanks as Woody his most iconic role? Tim Allen as Buzz. Um, what's his name? Don – You got it. Don Wrinkle. Don Rickles. Rickles. Close Wrinkly enough. Don. Um, is it his most iconic role as Mr. Potato Head? Um, Zach did the trivia last week after we went off air that all of Toy Story 3 was just sound quotes from other movies and stuff, right, that they pieced, they pieced together. Toy Story 4. But yeah. oh, Toy Story 4, yeah. okay. Um, Toy Story 4, for all intents and purposes, does not exist tonight. I don't yeah. want to talk about it. I don't want to yeah. think about it. Toy Story 4, I will never watch. Sounds like you got some demons you need to work out. We'll talk about it late in one of the later <laughs> segments of the show. And then we have uh, overrated, underrated, the Toy Story cast, the actual toys, the characters themselves. Uh, so that'll all be great. Can we talk about how Andy looks changed? I was Googling pics, and he was creeped out by how he looks in 95 compared to Toy Story 3. I don't, is it that different? I mean, he ages, but I don't know. How much gonna, different I guess it is? I have to look this up. Let's do it. Andy aging. It's like a little distracting, right? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, Toy in, Story. In Toy Story, all the kids. Toddy Story. Yeah, in Toy Story, all the kids look like Andy. Oh wow. Eh. Is it really that bad? That big a difference? He's Hang got longer hair. I'm pulling it up. Yeah, let's see it. So. And this is when Andy goes off to college, I think, right? So yeah, so, like, there's 18. kind of – that's Andy 1, 2, and 3. Like, 2 and 3 you kind of understand, but, like, yeah, like, why are his eyes so far away from his eyebrows? Like, it's not ideal, the look. Eh, I mean, you know, that's 20 years in animation history, so, you know. It's true, 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 true. And you have to keep in mind, like, at the time – like, here's – Got her. Oh, I guess that's Andy as a toy. That's what fucking weird. Fuck? All right. You can have an Andy toy. Why would you want an Andy toy? Spoiler alert. Most overrated Andy and number two looks oddly different. Yeah. He's the one that kind of stands out to me, not so much number three. Right. Yeah, they don't even look like the same. Right. Yeah, nothing about those two look right. similar. Okay. But – um. So, yeah. Uh, I guess, you know, let's dive into the first topic. Um – Opening thoughts. Um, 
I think to me the thing that stands out the most about this movie are all the fucking quotes. Like everything in this movie is quotable. Like my entire book today is just quote 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 <laughs> quote quote. Yeah. Uh, what are you looking at, hockey puck? <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, that awesome was his, that was an actual like catchphrase. And then it's of an actual Rickles. yeah. And like, then that it's was an actual hockey phrase. puck, and it's right. very funny. Um, I'm just like going through them. Uh. Wow, uh, dude, my brain is shot. Did you get lost. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, Mister Lightbeer. Uh, that was the first. This most recent watch. It was the first time I caught that. Oh, okay, that was great. Um, I'm so glad you're not a dinosaur. Uh, <laughs> he like realizes he's not. Uh, what do what I want to say I can't say because there's preschool toys around. Right. Like it's just they it's do a good job of like so adding an adult good. sense of things. Like oh, when yeah. uh, when Woody's doing the staff meeting, he's like, "I'd like to thank Mr. Uh, Speakenspell for his presentation on plastic awareness." <laughs> right. Or whatever yeah, 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 yeah. That's and so fucking good. Like um, they they have a way of integrating the adult humor with like the adult presentation seamlessly. with yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I and mean, that's what this a lot of the successful ones do. Like SpongeBob we've talked about before and some right. other kids movies. Um I mean, some of the uh, the really iconic ones, and we put we put these on uh, the Thoughts from the Bench Instagram and stuff, but, like, don't you see the hat? I'm Mrs. Nesbitt. Oh, that's the best. Iconic. Yeah. Uh, that's not flying. That's falling with style. Um, one of the underrated ones that was pointed out by somebody on Twitter, uh, they thought we had the underrated, most underrated Toy Story characters, like, uh, who do you think it is? And they said the, the shark in the toy box. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that moment. Look, I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Like, that's right. a fucking great moment. It's a great line. Um, when, they're, when they're in the bag, when Sid brings them home, and Buzz goes, I don't believe that child's ever been to medical school. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just those dumb throwaway lines in this movie, I yeah. think, that help it age with you. Which which Buzz is funnier? Because there's so – there's like – the really dry humor buzz, like there. Right. But then there's also like the really slapsticky, almost like when his helmet comes off and he's like pretending <laughs> to choke or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Does yeah. he stay that way throughout the whole series? Yes. To he gets. Yeah. He, he he starts to lean a little bit more slapsticky, but at every at, at a point in in every movie, they either a interact with a Buzz Lightyear that doesn't know it's a toy yet, or in Toy Story three, he gets flipped back to demo mode. Oh yeah, Spanish Buzz. <laughs> well, and then Spanish Buzz is later, but like. He's uh, when he's in demo mode. He's like, <laughs> he, he's got them all locked up inside of in, inside of Sunnyside, right? Because they're like forced to play in the caterpillar room with all the real little kids, right? And Ham is playing the harmonica, and he slams the cage. And he goes, "Shut up, you song hound or hog or whatever." <laughs> like it's just like he doesn't call any of them by their names, like for the majority of it when he's like. When he's uh, when he's Buzz, who doesn't know he's a toy yet, like the right. wild things he calls them, but that's essentially what they are. Um, what happens in the second one? He meets like his other toy buzzes or something so at he, Al's toy barn. He's oh, like, yeah. yeah, he's walking through <laughs> Al's toy <laughs> barn. <laughs> Newman, <laughs> Newman, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's walking through Al's toy barn and he sees like new Buzz Lightyear, and it like comes with like a utility belt. And he's like, I got to have that. So he gets up there. He loses a fight to, like, the buzz that's in there. Right. And then the buzz that's in there, because Rex has been playing the Buzz Lightyear video game, goes, Buzz, I figured out how to defeat Emperor Zurg. And he's like, you did? And then he's like, come with me, large lizard man. Like, <laughs> Oh, that's right. And then he reverts to, like, the old buzz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, because it, it's a buzz that doesn't know it's a toy yet. Right. And then, like. Emperor Zerg reveals that he's Buzz's father, and, like, at the end of the movie, they're playing catch with, like, the balls that Emperor Zerg shoots out of his gun, and, like, <laughs> that whole fight scene is fucking hilarious, because, oh, yeah. like, the entire Toy Story idea is that Buzz's laser is a joke, it's a flashing light bulb, but when he uses it, when Buzz, who doesn't know he's not an action, or not a toy, uses it on Emperor Zerg, Emperor Zerg reacts like it's a real laser. <laughs> yeah, like it's blinded in the yeah, eyes. he's like, ah! <laughs> blast, and <laughs> Right, and then right. he shoots the balls <laughs> out of his gun. The little Nerf balls are. And right. all the other toys are like, "What the fuck is going on?" So much fun. I got now. I got to watch the second, uh, third one. I really, I tried not to. It was worth like, it. It was I, worth it. As soon it. as I was done with this one, 
I just wanted to roll right into two and three, and yeah. I, I couldn't because it was late. But I did have that. I mean, it's su- it's such a feel good movie, right? Just like every no. every. <laughs> Oh yeah, it Toy really Story is. Story Two gets sad, and Toy Story Three gets sad. No, I mean the first one here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the first yeah. one, yeah, for sure. Uh, what were some of your favorite moments? Uh, I mean, all the set pieces are so great, like the Pizza Planet, everything that happens there, like pizza Sid's room. Planet it's like amazing. everywhere they go is iconic. And any time so Buzz glows in the dark, it's awesome. Yeah, glow in the dark Buzz is fun. Sid's room definitely freaks me out still a little to this day. Not only because he's got like all the neon posters and stuff, but like all the mutated toys. Yeah, definitely weirds me out a little bit. So the one mutated toy is like the crane mm-hmm. with legs, with the baby head on it. No, it's like like a fishing pole kind of deal. Oh yeah, with just the legs. It's a hooker. Uh, uh, I get it. Right. Uh, yeah. Is that does it say shit. that in the credits? Does it say the hooker? Is I don't the character? know. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I had read it somewhere. That's where they got it. Yeah. That's yeah, incredible. it's like it's a whole bunch. All the toys that are like m- melded together are none that I recognize at all. You got like the rocket dude on the skateboard. You got like the duck that's like also muscly with the plunger thing on the bottom. Like I don't recognize any of the toys that are mixed right. together. No, I don't either. at all. It's what growing up poor will do to you. Uh, <laughs> right. And he well, and I think that's kind of what they're nodding to because he blows up the first toy that Sid blows up on on screen is a combat Carl. Oh, which I was like. That's an incredible G.I. Joe knockoff because they referenced G.I. Joe like earlier in it. But yeah. like for them to call him a, a combat Carl was just fucking incredible. I mean, long before the Lego movie came out and what I was most impressed with the Lego movie was how they made everything just look so perfect. Like all the Legos yeah. looked insanely I- exactly like Legos. Right. And then in this movie. 20 years earlier or whatever, it still is pretty darn awesome. Like, all the right. army men are incredible. Like, the way they move. Uh, I was reading that the people at Pixar put, like, nailed their feet to boards and tried to walk around the office so right. they could, like, get the animation right on those. I mean, that is – the detail there is great. And then even, like, the Rex, you know, the texture of Rex and Slinky and everything. Like, yeah. all the toys are just they, so spot you on. Could, you feel like you could touch them. I mean, this is a movie where they couldn't do certain things because, like, the effect hadn't been invented yet. Like, right. water droplets and, like, right. certain fiery explosions and stuff. But all the toys look so perfect, yeah. you know? And, like, even the building blocks that are in the room. Like, it's all – the details are just well, and, amazing. And just as, like, you start to – so, like, a, a perfect example of this is when the army men are sneaking down for the birthday party. Which, the army men are maybe one of the most underrated characters in all of the Toy Story trilogy. The army men go down, right? And you're like, okay, this is a little outlandish, right? But then the mom <laughs> kicks them, yeah, right? And, of course, the one that's the mind detector breaks because that was the one that would always break Yeah, because he's got that l- long, thin piece of plastic. That was always the army guy that broke. So just as, like, you start to, like, maybe lose your, like, touch of reality with it, you're like, ah, I don't think I believe this, then they – do something that makes you remember that they're a fucking toy. Right. And that's – I mean, they do that the entire way through the series. And the Lego movie does a great job at that where, like, like they'll lose a foot or something and they'll just click it back in. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. all – like, as that goes, it just – it's fucking great. I love when they're trying to put the batteries back in and Potato Head's just, like, jamming <laughs> it in. Jam- like, well, like, why like, would no, he punches know? is positive, minus yeah, is negative. Yeah. Like, they just can't figure it out. Right? It's yeah. so fucking good. When Molly beats the wheels off a of Potato Head – and he's like, it says on my box, five and above. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Three and up. Yeah, three and Where's up. Where's that bonding up. strip? The piece of tape trying to fix his ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's that bonding strip? <laughs> so many, yeah, so many great Buzz wants more tape. Yeah. He's fixing with a jack underneath. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. The cardboard right. ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's the question. Did you guys ever have a toy like that? Like that was the Buzz Lightyear toy? Like an actual Buzz Lightyear? Not like the literal Buzz what Lightyear. What was but like your Buzz? Yeah, did you have an equivalent to the Buzz where you had like an awesome toy and then this new thing came out? Even if it was like, I don't know. I remember skateboards and Razor scooters mm-hmm. being like, when those came out, those were super popular. Yeah. Or I guess not came out, but they got real crazy around like sixth grade. And Razor scooters in particular, I remember, was a big thing. But that's not so much like an action figure. or. A I, I have a couple. I think maybe like... When I was, like, a kid, I had, like, a bunch of, like, Batman action figures and shit. Uh-huh. And then they re-released, like, the original Star Wars trilogy. 
And I think, like, I went from, like, Batman to being, like, a Star Wars kid, you know? And that was, like, my Woody the Buzz transition. Yeah. Nice. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Mine was my Transformers to wrestling action figures. Oh, okay. That was, like, and even more so, like, I had all of the Beast Wars characters, but, like, Optimus Prime, who's Optimus Primal in Beast Wars, um, was my favorite, and he's, like, a giant monkey. Um, and so, like, like, that was my prized possession, and then, like, I had, like, the shittiest wrestling action figures, because the really expensive ones cost a lot of money, but then the one year, I think for my birthday, I got the Titantron, which is, like, the entrance ramp, and, like, three of them, and The Rock was, would have been Buzz, because he had a little thing on his foot that when he stood on the Titantron, it played The Rock's theme song. Mm. Okay. And that was like some next level shit. That's I was tight. like, yeah, like, okay. this is cool. So like that was like I went from playing with like my Transformers to wrestling action figures. Gotcha. Nice. I yeah I don't know if I had I wasn't really like an action figure guy, so I don't know if there was like an exact sort of transition. But definitely, I mean, I always had Star Wars stuff for many many years, and then probably when I started to transition off of star wars that was like all my star wars stuff became the woody stuff like it just all these toys and like games and everything kind of you went from star wars to harry potter eh, i mean they could they both started coming out around the same time so. yeah but maybe yeah i didn't have like harry potter toys and no we didn't though. have any harry po- like we had the the games but that was about it right um i think kids our age <coughs> had to like pick sides between Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Like which which nerdy fandom path you were gonna take. I had them all. Oh yeah. I, I walked the line. I think I was more of a Lord of the Rings kid though. Like we love Two Towers. We we watch Two Towers a lot. And then also Justin Justin more than me, but we were both really into Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh yeah. Like that was something that we took very seriously. That's fair. There was a uh I wanna get to Steph's comment here in a second. There was a when you had to drive to the drive-in theater, do you remember somebody made that Davy Jones out of wood? No. Oh, man. My brother and I would stop at it every time we went to the drive-in because we're like, it's fucking Davy Jones. Like, out yeah. made of wood. This nice. is great. And it's like all of his tentacles. And, like, right, right. Um, Steph says, uh, was I the weird kid that played with Power Rangers? No. But as you revealed, you're five years younger than us. And Power Ranger toys, when the first Power Rangers came out, were impossible to get your hands on. They were sold out. They were super expensive. Mm -hmm. And it was like you couldn't just buy, like, the Black Ranger. You had to buy the Black Ranger with his Zord, and then you had to buy all the Zords to make a Mega Zord. And, like, their gloves came with, like, the morphing powers and stuff. But that stuff was, like, pretty fucking expensive. I remember it because, like, I wanted nothing more than Power Rangers toys, and they were just – they were too much money. They were, like, stupid amounts of money. I don't think I ever fucked with the Power Rangers. Mm. Or I kind of remember watching it, but I know I didn't have the toys, and maybe that's why. And my mom was yeah. like, turn this shit off. You're going to keep asking for those fucking toys. Right, right, right. I think Power Rangers for me was before, actually, this stuff. Like, I think Power Rangers for me was when I was real real little, yeah. like five or six. Yeah. And yeah. then I transitioned to Star Wars and everything. So I definitely had a, a strong Power Ranger uh phase in there for sure yeah so you got the hammy down of them and that that's yeah that's pretty awesome because those toys now the original run of them are worth a fuck ton of money because there were so few of them because nobody thought this was going to be a hit like it was meant to just fill like if you uh watch so people that make movies that made us the original run of that is the toys that made us and they did a whole episode on power rangers and it is fucking awesome nice yeah power rangers was not meant to become the global sensation that it was so uh can we talk real quick about pizza planet i want to go back to that and just say yes. uh while we're talking about like our favorite parts of the movies did you guys like even now when i'm watching it i'm like that looks like the coolest place ever. oh yeah and i just wish there was somewhere that existed like that and i can't think of anything well, there is a pizza planet in disney world is there really yeah okay is it like that one i think it's pretty close yeah I mean, the thi- like with the thing that spits out all the juice and like all the games and everything, just and the guys at the door, like it was legitimate, man, with all the rockets oh, and everything. Yeah. yeah, that did seem like the coolest place ever, and uh, I did, I do get jealous of Andy when I'm watching the movie. I'm like, man, I just want to go to Pizza Planet. Look how cool that looks. 
So, um, here, let me. What's that burger place like Johnny Rockets? Johnny yeah, Rockets. yeah, 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 like yeah. Kind yeah. Of the same. <laughs> no. So, like, there's the <laughs> that's the Pizza Planet <laughs> at Disney World. Oh, okay. Um, but they have like the you know space rocket machine with the aliens in it. Right. Um, it's got like five games. What the fuck? Yeah, it's it's not as as like amazing as the actual depicted one. But you would think – now, I know the Star Wars world wasn't super successful, but the way that they entrenched themselves in trying to nail down the, uh, like the authentic n- authenticity of it, mm-hmm. you would imagine Pizza Planet's coming. I hope so. I like an authentic Pizza Planet. Yeah, I mean, you got all the Harry Potter world at Universal, which is right. pretty crazy. So, yeah, I would, I would hope so. No, I would love Pizza Planet. I just want to play the game. I want to get an alien out of the claw machine. Oh, yeah. That's all I want to do. For sure. And it would be awesome if, like, towards the bottom of the barrel there was a Buzz and a Woody. Like, that's just – I'd be like, this is great. Definitely. That would be – Right? That would be pretty great. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But you would never – the way Buzz gets picked out of that is so unrealistic. Impossible. It's so unrealistic. Especially when Woody's pulling him out the back and right. the claw's still hanging on. Yeah, like, like, fuck that. Iron claw. It's like the jaws of life in there. Right. Yeah. No claw machine is ever that fucking strong. No. Bullshit. I call bullshit. Yeah. Um, I'm Shout just, out to Sid, though, for uh, precisely Yeah. Oh, well, you know he does that, like, daily. And sure. then the fact that Sid grows up. Is he, is he a pizza? He's a trash man. He's the, the trash man, man in three. I think he's – I don't think he's in two. I don't think so. Um, Just kind of going back through. Um, <laughs> Buzz's existential crisis. <laughs> like, yeah. that was all of us graduating college. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I thought it was a spaceman. Then <laughs> nobody believed me. It turns out it wasn't a spaceman. Um, fuck it. Incredible. Uh. One of one of my favorite lines and moments, Buzz, will you get up here and give me a hand? And he just throws the arm. Mm, right. Like that's like there's just so many of those moments that like the physical action of it as a kid when you watch it like buzz through his arm. That's funny. But then as an adult, understanding the sarcasm behind it. And like I think that's the best what Toy Story does better than a lot of these other ones is that the moments – that you laugh, adults and kids laugh. They might be laughing for different reasons, but they're both laughing. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, in Inside Out, there's a bit where, like, they go inside the dad's head and the mom's head, and she's, like, dreaming about the guy in Puerto Rico or whatever, and he's, like, his all of his people on the inside of his head are watching a sports game. Yeah, They're, like, <laughs> watching the big game, and they're all, like, cheering, and then it's, like, Warning, warning, wife is looking at us. And they're like, shit. And, like, they turn off right. the TV, and then you see through his eyes, and she's, like, looking at him. And he's, he's like, was anyone paying attention? Like, <laughs> just, like, But, like, kids wouldn't laugh at that part. Right. They don't get that part. Whereas, like, Toy Story, that's the best. I don't, yeah, like, I don't know how any like, child understood Inside Out. Like, that was yeah, I, almost, that was, like, beyond me, man. Inside Out was definitely targeted at. Because Inside Out came out when? Eh, it was like 2008 or nine, I think. No. Like no, 2015. Yeah, 2015. 2015. So yeah. we're like the Toy Story generation, if you want to call us that, is like an adult at this point, And like we're in our 20s. And they're like, yeah, remember what it was like to be a kid and how awesome our movies were? Here's one that's about being an adult. And you're like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I just can't imagine like a kid trying to figure out what was happening in that movie. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, the whole end sequence too with Right, where the rocket explodes. The rocket and explodes yeah. and we're flying, this isn't flying, this falling with style and um, That's a that's just a really well built sequence actually. Yeah. Like not only it's like it's layered, right? So the van leaves and they miss the van and then the truck comes and then they get on the truck and then just when you think the dog comes and is interrupting it and trying to kill them, and then it gets Buzz or Buzz sacrifices himself, and then Woody gets RC, and then but then the toys turn on Woody, right? And then they're both on RC, yep. and then the battery dies, and then the rocket like that's just a well, very multi layered. He goes to, he goes to sw- swipe the match, and then the right. car goes by, blows out the match. Yeah, 
Like, and then you're like, oh, and then he's the fucking thanks to Sid, right? With right. the he knows to light the. Uh, it's, it's just very complicated. Yeah, it's just a lot of. If you break that down, it's really impressive. I think the best part of Toy Story, in a lot of ways, has nothing to do with the movie, but the idea that like Pixar was a nobody company that was kind of getting their feet off the ground was green lit and created by Steve Jobs was the one that funded Toy Story. Mm-hmm. So it's like that weird like Steve Jobs gave you the iPhone, he gave you all this amazing technology and Toy Story. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck. You're like, wait, what? Steve Jobs was involved in Right. This? And just like how they lost the first half of Toy St- or they lost half of Toy Story midway through production because one of the computers died. They lost the whole thing. And it, they just happen to have a backup on this lady's machine at her house. She just happened to have a copy of it. So, like, they had to, like, restart from, like, the halfway point because that's all she had. Yeah. But, like, Toy Story almost didn't exist because it got erased. Well, lucky for that lady. <laughs> Good well, thing lucky she was for real. all of us. Yeah. Shout out that lady. Right. Shout out to her, wherever she is. So. Um, all right. Let's uh, – better or worse, Sam? This and this topic tonight is, I guess, better or worse, Sam. But it was really born out of is this the my best? question: Is this the best Pixar movie? Right? And I mean, I, it's. I think it's going to be really hard to find one that's better, just because of not only it's the original, it's the OG, but also because just of how good it is and how it set the standard for Pixar that has been a j- multi generational standard that's carried through for twenty plus years now. Yeah. And the movie still holds up. I mean, I, I think it's going to be really hard just with the, the cast of characters and the voices. And I mean, they're still making them. They just made the fourth one, right? Yep. So, you know, we'll see if there's one that's better than it. I'm uh, In the dark, I would say this is the best for sure, hands down. But as we're going through, maybe you can convince me otherwise. We will see. Okay. So the first one, this one's a heater. Up. Oh. So Up is... I think one of the sadder Pixar movies, <laughs> the whole fucking opening sequence we'll get to later. Spoiler alert. Um, but I think that this has a lot of the same, like, you know, adventure that Toy Story has. It has a lot of great one liners. It has the same kind of there's two main characters, but there's like a fun ensemble cast when you add in Doug and the bird and. You know the the dogs and all the other stuff like. Mm-hmm. But is it better, Zach? No. <laughs> no. 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 Come on now. Zach's like dismiss it immediately. I mean, it's good. I think it's better than some of the most of majority of the other movies we'll talk about on this list. But uh, I mean, it's hard to come at the king. It is hard to come at the king, Justin. I think they're they're different movies i think up is definitely like you said more of a sadder movie i mean the whole opening sequence is quite sad with the wife dying and everything and then at the end when he kind of sends the boy off you know for adventure and everything Mm -hmm. i think i think up might be more of a more beautiful movie if that makes sense i love that i love that i love like the idea is so whimsical and so joyful you know a a house floating away with balloons balloons. like that's such a childlike fantastical sort of magical idea right and, um, you know, especially, like, a guy who's dealing with the tragic death of his wife and yeah. befriends this little boy. Like, I think it's more of a beautiful story, for sure. I, I don't think that I would like it more than Toy Story. But um, it's certainly, I think, Up has a special place in the Pixar canon. I feel like it's oddly sort of like its own yeah its own thing yeah. compared to all the other ones. You know, it's not, a, it's not necessarily an ensemble. And it's not, I don't know, it's just in a very, it's an emotionally powerful movie, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but, like, the city, like, wants to, like, take his house to, like, yes. build a highway or some shit. Yep. Big fuck the government movie. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Good big point. Fuck Low the key. Movie. Big fuck the government movie. I think, too, the b- I think beautiful was the perfect way to put it. And, the, and what you're saying that it kind of lives in its own bubble is because it was never merchandised. There weren't up toys. Mm-hmm. Well, well I think the they're fucking old man and the dog. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the bird and the dog. Kid. The bird, the dog, the fat kid. But, like, a lot of, especially now. Dead Pix- grandma? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Espe- 
special glow in the dark grand dead grandma. Like I'm just imagining the Buzz Lightyear commercial, but with the dead grandma toy. Buzz, Buzz Lightyear. Lightyear to the rescue. It's like a Stretch Armstrong because it's a lifeless body. Exactly. But glows in the Uh-oh. dark. It's translucent. Getting real dark. <laughs> um, what year did this come out? 2009. Oh, nine. It's right there on the poster. Yeah. Um. Also, there was never any sequels to it, which Pixar right. has done sequels for other movies, or like no other similar. It's just like totally unique. Well, there's supposed to be a, a, a Doug movie coming out, I think. Oh, is there a Doug movie? I think so. I mean, if it hasn't come out by now, I wouldn't think that they're getting, you know, they're going to do it. It's been so long that I don't know if it really would make sense to do a Doug movie at this point. I mean, maybe it's in development. I don't know. Doug Special movie. Mission. Doug Days. I don't – Doug movie, I don't know. It doesn't really seem to have – Oh, there, and maybe it's a series. Three new Pixar series coming to Disney+. Plus. Oh. What are going to do with Doug? A Doug series. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably not Doug watch that. Yeah. You sick fuck. I don't really be know fantastic. That, eh, I don't really know that I love the character of Doug. Like, he had some okay lines, but – What are you fucking – Squirrel! I am – You are my – He's like – He's like, I have just met you, but we are best friends. I love you. <laughs> yeah, wasn't I didn't like that character all that much. Doug's the only part of the movie that doesn't make me want to fucking kill myself. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so maybe a, a beautiful movie, but not better than Toy Story. This next one is going to be the one where I put my fucking foot in the ground. It's a better movie than Toy Story. Wally. I've never seen it. So Wally famously has 17 pages of dialogue. And it's a two-hour movie. It is a beautiful piece of filmmaking that is vi- – it's the visual art of filmmaking. It takes you back to the idea of um, – just what I'm about to say, smart shit. It just leaves my fucking brain. Mm. Um, what's To the Moon? The, the first silent film. Oh. What? To the Moon? Journey to the Moon, something like that. Oh, yeah, it's Trip to the Moon. Is it a trip to the moon? A trip to the moon. A trip to the yeah. moon. So. The Tonight Tonight video. Yeah. The Tonight Tonight video. The trip to the moon. Um, I'm pulling it up here so everybody can see. That's a trip to the moon. And um, this is played out also in Hugo. We see them making this movie in Hugo, which is really this beautiful callback. But to me, Wally. Wally takes you back to the beginning of filmmaking and the art of visual storytelling because it's all noises and sound effects. There's no dialogue. There's no whatever. But you understand this character and you get such an emotional attachment to Wally, like the cleanup robot that like, and it's all done through visual storytelling. That to me makes it a better movie than Toy Story. I. Saw Wally only once, and I, you know what? I remember really liking it, but I also can't think of anything from the movie Wally, okay. like except for Eve, and Eva. like Eva, Eva, and like when he's floating and he's like touching the stars or whatever. That was pretty m- like set in space. There's some definitely good visuals, but I like I can't remember the movie at all, and unfortunately for that reason, I can't put it above Toy Story. Okay, but I I remember I liked it, but I, I just, think that's yeah. a that's a fair reason. Yeah, it stuck with me. Like deeply, like I remember a lot of Wally. Nice. Okay, I think isn't that they're like the fat people. Yep. Yeah. John like Goodman's human society in that one lives too. on a spaceship, and now they're all just real fat because they just have like high tech chairs they float around in. Right. Like, you know. W- it's Same. A warning it, yeah. shot Same. for it's, the future. It's definitely a, a warning shot for the future, and like Wally is cleaning up Earth. That's kind of what he's his job is, and he has this like little um, like. Uh, what would what would go on the back of a tractor trailer that is like his house, and he has like he keeps the beautiful things that he finds as he cleans stuff up, mm. and like there's like a little like he has like you know the plant that like when the sun hits it it goes back and forth like he has one of those and like just like the the pretty things in life and it's I don't yeah. know it's a beautiful film. It sounds like this would wreck me, like this would ruin my fucking. Life. Oh yeah, yeah. He looks like a a little version of. John F- Johnny Five from Short Circuit, <laughs> kind of, kind of not wrong as far as like what the robot kind of is. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's but pretty close. I'll check. I'm, I'm, I didn't know what it was about, and now I'm more interested to see it. So. Wally's one of my favorite movies of all time, and I think 
if I'm ranking them in whether or not it's a better movie, Wally's a better movie, Toy Story I like more. Toy Story is in my top ten movies of all time. But uh, so yeah, Wally. Uh, the next one is probably the only movie on this list that can compete with Toy Story and merchandising cars. I was never big into cars. I mean, Cars 2 is like for a long time was famously like the Thor 2. Right. Where it was like the one that people kind of agreed wasn't all that great. Right. It and was the uh, bad Pixar movie. Yeah, and not, not even bad. Like it's still decently well reviewed and received, but it was just like compared to everything else, which was way up here, it was right. sort of like in the middle. And it came either after. Might have came after Wally. I think it was before. I think Cars was on the earlier side. It was like Toy Story and Monsters Inc. and Cars before Wally. I think Toy Story, Toy Story uh, Cars was after The Incredibles. That was so The Incredibles was so fucking amazing, and then like Cars, and then Cars Two is after Toy Story Three. So like you complete your trilogy of your like staple franchise, and then you come out with a second movie and then it wasn't that good and you're like oh, i don't know about there's all such this. a there's like a clear division here though if you're looking at this can we pull this up so people can look at yeah. the, the wikipedia so it's like this is the rundown of pixar movies and when i'm looking at this there's just such a clear dividing line between like all of the classics and then the new generation where it's sort of well so unfortunately there's a reason for that oh okay john lassiter oh you think so the last John Lasseter movie is Toy Story 3. No, Cars 2, it looks like. Is it Cars Director. 2? Yeah. Well, but, like, he was removed from Pixar after that. Is that the timing? Yeah. Okay. What do you do? Sexual harassment. Yeah. Mm. Turns out the guy who made Toy Story is a bit of a creep. Weird. Yeah, but if you look at this lineup, you know, you have just from Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, Incredibles, Cars, Ratatouille, WALL-E, Up, and then Toy Story 3. I mean, outside the Toy Story franchise, each of those completely unique and completely a classic. Right. And then it just sort of starts to go downhill a little bit. And Brave is good. It's not amazing. Brave is good. Monsters University was okay. Inside Out is good. Uh, Finding Dory was weak. I mean, it was kind of just a rehash of Finding Nemo in a lot yeah. of ways. The Good Dinosaur was a straight-up bomb. Yeah. And that was the first year that they did two Pixar movies in a row was Inside Out and Good Dinosaur. Right. Um, or in the same year, I mean. But then, like, Coco is beautiful. Is it? it? Oh, my God. Coco's amazing. Okay. Coco's ugly cry good. Ugly cry good. Uh, and then Incredibles 2 was just okay. I didn't see Toy Story 4. A lot of people didn't like Onward. And then a lot of people are talking about Soul being pretty right. good. But it's a very mixed bag in the last half, right? right. So the first half, the first 10 or 15 years, all classics. The last 10 years, a little bit less or so. And uh, that's an interesting point about John Lasseter. But, um, yeah, Cars. And so Cars, I was never – I Toy Story is better for sure. People – so uh, because Pixar is so directly tied to Steve Jobs in a lot of ways, um, people will tell you and, – and there's people like who have diagnosed and tried to figure out why – but people will tell you that John Lasseter was to Pixar what Steve Jobs was to Apple. Like, Apple without Steve Jobs is not nearly as good when there was the bridge where he wasn't there. And then also after his death was pretty bad. John Lasseter's kind of the same thing where he's the uh, he is the Walt Disney of Pixar. Mm -hmm. He is the magic. He is the, the childlike nature and that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, Cars. Um, obviously, I don't think this is a better movie than Toy Story, but I think it needed to be on this list because of its merchandising power and what it did as far as, like, think about the past 10 years. You haven't seen a little kid without a, a Lightning McQueen lunchbox, backpack, stroller, whatever. That's it's got fair. light-up shoes. Yeah, that's fair. It's got Larry the Cable Guy. It does have Tow Mater. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next movie, Inside Out. Um, you guys both saw this. Yeah, this movie looks so fucking dumb. I never saw it, but mm. like when it got released, I was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't. And I think this is where I like really was just like, I'm at that point where like, cause you know, like, talking about like Toy Story, where it's like, I can watch like a child's film and like still enjoy it. But after I saw this, I was like, 
I think I'm at that point where, like, unless it's, like, a Toy Story 4 or something, like, I don't have, like, any interest. Because I was just like, this is, like, way different. You know, because, like, maybe similar to Toy Story and, like, a weird, you know, inanimate things have, like, human characteristics. But at this point, and I think, may I don't think I've seen, like, a, a like a kid's movie, like, since, what was this, 2015? Yeah. And it was just kind of weird, because this is the one that stands out where I was just like, these movies for kids are different now. You know what I mean? It just looked, like, way different than, like, A Bug's Life. Like, it was, like, more adult problems, yeah. kind of. But no, like it is. It's, children, it's definitely And I was a like, I don't like that, you know. Like, the end, one of the end bits is, like, they go to the control panel of the little girl that they're the, the, the feelings for, and there's a, a big red button on the control panel that has like a lock on it and it says puberty and like mindy kaling's character goes what's puberty and, <laughs> and they're like i don't know it's probably not important <laughs> it's like a good little like throw in there you know yeah um uh, i think i'm kind of in the same boat and i don't think that i've seen very many if any of the, the recent pixar movies um this one i was not super into i feel like they did. This is like Christopher Nolan doing Tenet, where it's like they're just going too far down <laughs> the Pixar rabbit, rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. Yeah, it's like they try to get so existential in it. They're like talking about all these emotions and ideas and like all these inner workings of a person's brain. Like yeah. it was just so complicated. And the thing with Pixar's done lately, which they did after this, is like trying to broaden their topics for their movies and like making them more socially conscious and having more diverse movies with like different messages and things like that. And I feel like it's just overcomplicating what Pixar used to be, you know, and it's now about more. There we go. Yeah. So I don't, I didn't know inside out is not better than toy story. I was not a huge fan of it. Just a con like it was just too complex. I think for me. And like I said, if I was a kid, I don't know how I would follow this movie at yeah. all. And I think the, yeah, the movies after this, I was also, I don't, have I seen? I saw Incredibles 2, and that was it. Okay, so of the – we're going to call them the post Lassiters. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cars 2 I didn't see. Brave I liked. Monsters University was okay. Inside Out I loved. I thought this was a great movie. I thought it was very sweet. It was very touching. Um, on our other show, A Great Depression, we talk a lot about mental health. This has a lot of ties to that, um, and I think it gives – it gives people who like have kids that are kind of like sad or angry or different a good way for them to be able to talk to them about their emotions. It it kind of dumbs it down in some ways, but also I think it helps them have better conversation. So, yeah, um, good dinosaur. I didn't see Finding Dory was okay. Coco I loved. Coco I think is my favorite post Lassiter movie. Um, and then Incredibles 2 was okay. So, yeah, I think, uh, if I'm ranking them, it's, like, Coco, then Inside Out, then, like, Brave and Incredibles 2. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Jeez. Um, all right. Speaking of, this one stands a shot, right? These last few stand a shot to, like, knock off Toy Story. Incredibles is pretty darn close it's really close i i think as a movie i like incredibles more than i like toy story okay i can't put it above toy story in the pixar canon but i mean it's so fucking fun and awesome it, i mean it's, I, I love it it's fun yeah i don't know how fun toy story is at times because there are times where it's like oh fuck like you know like some bad shit's happening right now yeah. whereas like Incredibles 2 gets a little bit more icky with, like, them, like, separating and, you know, right. the whole, like, him aging kind of thing. and um, But, like, Samuel L. Jackson going, honey, where's my super suit? Yeah. It's just – it's fun and it's funny. It is all around. It's, it's like a, awesome. It's a great popcorn movie. It's like the effects are really cool. The superpowers yeah. are great. I mean, it's just it's, – it's awesome. The – go ahead. What year did this come out? Incredible. Four, I think, for was the first one. 2004 okay and um as quotable as toy story it has sure. just as many great quotes in it and moments and like gags and um yeah it's it's really it's quite fucking awesome i uh, yeah i would i would rather watch the incredibles over toy story but i can't i can't put it as better than but okay. I, I enjoy it more zach 
Uh, I've never seen it. Oh, oh, oh buddy, dude. this is a must. This Hell is yeah. a must. You're watching all the Marvel movies now, right? Uh, no, I got to Avengers give that up. And gave up. Nice. Yeah. You got you got to, to the point on. that you were trying to get to. Trying to hop back on. All right, all right. Well, you, did you see the Avengers, or you thought before Avengers? No, I watched Avengers. Oh, okay. Well, you know, uh, the, the like, first ah. phase one. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, but when going back to looking at that list, I think you guys would be startled by how few of these movies I saw. Okay. Uh, I never saw Bugs Life. Oh. <gasps> uh, didn't see Incredibles. Didn't see Cars. Didn't see Ratatouille. Didn't see Wall-E. Didn't see Cars Two. Never saw Brave. Never saw Monsters University. Never saw Inside well, we Out. We can't do the quote game now. Uh, no, I'll be yeah. good. I'm gonna dummy him in the quote game. <laughs> yeah. I uh, never saw. We might have to call Steph. We'll get Finding Steph on Glory. the phone. I'm just like, I'm I'm honestly like impressed that you guys have seen so many of these fucking movies. I every I just assumed everyone did. I I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. Like I would go. No, I th- I think I'm the I'm honestly I think I'm the weird one in this group. Like I would take, and and I always remember feeling weird, in the theater. I was gonna say, did you see them in theaters? Yeah. Oh yeah. Been like, oh yeah. In theaters. I would have been like a freshman in high school when this right. came out. Yeah, and it was like uh. Like, definitely, like, you took your girlfriend, or, or you went with, like, a group with, like, girls in it, or, like, you took your, the, the kid, your, your kid's friend's, you know, baby kid, or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to describe that. Also, I have a younger brother by four years, so that also was allowed mm-hmm. me to stretch my Pixar watching a little bit further, too, so. You yeah. have any siblings? Oh, yeah, a whole boatload of them. Yeah, younger. he's got younger siblings, okay, too, cool, yeah. so. Yeah, maybe that was part of it. But I'm surprised you haven't seen as many. But Incredibles is definitely worth watching. A plus. It's so fun. A yeah. plus. Um, this one also stands a shot. Finding Nemo. If if Toy Story is 1A, Nemo is 1B. That's a good way to put it, I think. Because Nemo is so iconic in its own way. Right. Right? It has just as many quotes. It's just as funny. It has just as star-studded of a cast. It has just as much credence put towards it inside of Disney World. Like, there's a, an amazing Nemo like stage thing that they do. That's like a musical slash like reenactment of the movie, and like it's kind of like Lion King where they borrow the same ideas. Where like there's a giant you know dory on top of somebody's head, and they're like doing yeah. this, and it's like, but like it's magical. Nemo is just as magical to me as Toy Story. Have you seen Nemo? I have. Okay. I'm not a complete monster. Uh, <laughs> I am, and I'm not. But I hated Nemo, so I'm a little bit of a monster. I didn't hate it. Okay. But I am. I'm going to kind of call you out. Okay. I want to hear you back up that it has an almost, I think you said equally star-studded cast. Yes. Yes. Let I me w- pull I it up. I to defend this point. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I don't know that the cast of Nemo really comes to mind. As it does with Toy Story. I can only remember that monster Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. <laughs> I know Eric Bana's in it. He's the one shark. Okay. But that's so like a Ellen DeGeneres, Willem Dafoe. Uh, Who's Willem Dafoe? Gil. Is Gil? Yeah. The guy in the tank. Like the leader of the ones in the tank. Oh, with okay. the messed up, with the scar or whatever. Jeffrey Rush. Brad Garrett is bloat. Allison Janney is peach. Man, everyone in the everyone in the tank is the a-list crew right yeah so you know i mean it jeffrey rush is nigel if you don't Pelican. like you don't have your tom hanks tim allen for sure but ellen degeneres is at the top of her powers here but we know what she was using I, those powers for. i know but but she was at the top <laughs> of her powers keep another uh jeffrey rush is in the middle of um yeah pirates yeah pi- oh, thank you i was about to sp- but he's Barbosa, so yes, that's correct. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. So like, eh, pretty good cast. Pretty good cast. It has the names, I think, to to go. I think Finding Nemo is more beloved than Toy Story. Interesting. I do. I really think so because it's you know the father son journey and everything. I think that emotionally, a lot of people resonate more with, like in the zeitgeist. I think Finding Nemo has touched a lot more people than Toy Story has. Or bit like people gravitate towards it more. I mean, if we were to ever have a kid, I would base most of my fathering model off of Crush. <laughs> there you go. Crushes. <laughs> exactly. What's up, Squirt? Yeah, Finn, I, Noggin. 
I think one A and one B is the the perfect way to yeah. describe it. 1A, With Toy 1B. Story being one A, but in this being one B. Right. Zach, not not vibing with the Nemo as hard. Not interested. I can't do it. Okay. I, it, it's, I tried to rewatch it probably within the last couple months, and I just was like, I thought it meant more to me than it did, to the point where I was just like, Oh wow. I'm just gonna turn it off because I don't like that I don't. I don't feel a certain way about it. Oh, you know? I can get so I, I get behind like, that no, idea. Turning it off. Like, I get I, behind that. I don't want to face why I ever yeah. it doesn't connect with me yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the run I went on f- through to get ready for this show, I watched, obviously, Toy Story. Then I watched two and three. Mm-hmm. And um, it was such an emotional wreck after three that I was like, well, we're here. So <laughs> yeah. we're already really down. So then I watched um, Inside Out. Monsters Inc. because I had never seen either of those, so I wanted to watch one of the newer ones and one of the old classics I hadn't seen, and then I ended it with Nemo, because I think I love Toy Story, but I think Nemo is probably my favorite Pixar movie. I think a lot of people would agree with you. I think that's it, but I think all right, so one A, one B, and I think a lot of people would not think that this is their. It may not be the best Pixar movie, but this is a lot of people's favorites. It's Monsters Inc. It might be the best Pixar movie. It might be the best Pixar movie. Okay. It might be the funniest. I think it might. How have... you think it's funny? It's really oh, funny. What you don't? I didn't think it was as funny as Nemo or Toy Story. Oh man, when I think of funny, I'm thinking of Billy Crystal and John Goodman in this one, and Steve Buscemi, like you said. Right. Yeah, I think. I think. As, as I, I didn't say that goes. I didn't like. I yeah. loved it. I loved it. But like, I didn't think it was as funny as Toy Story or Nemo. I think it's a little bit of. The Forgotten Child, in that it came out so early mm-hmm. and was like immersed, you know, immense, or er, you know, with Toy Story and the, the Incredibles and like all these other classics. I think Monsters Inc. gets forgotten a lot, a little bit, but it is certainly in the same realm as them. I will say Toy Story is better because it was first, but I will say Monsters Inc. is funnier for sure. I think it's the first because now you know, and we'll talk about this coming up that we associate Pixar movies with being wild fucking tear jerkers yeah i think it's the first pixar movie that's very funny but also like very emotional you know like toy story they're kind of like testing the waters and it's like such a success yeah. they're like bug's oh, life maybe is, we can do like is scary not sad yeah toy story 2 gets a little bit sad but only for like a minute and then monsters inc is like monsters inc's brutal yeah at points yeah and yeah. it's also they borrowed – they tested it out in Toy Story 2 where, like, Woody and Buzz walk away from each other in Toy Story 2. It's like, you know, like the whole plot, plot, uh, plot of Toy Story 2 is Buzz trying to get Woody back. And then once he finally gets to him and he's going to rescue him and Woody doesn't go with them. He wants to go to Japan with the other – the Roundup gang. And Buzz is just like, I, I can't believe this. Like, and he's like, fine. And he walks away. And that happens in this movie, too. And I was like, what the fuck, Pixar? If they're best friends, they stay best friends, and they never leave. (laughs) The thing also about Monsters, Inc., though, is that, like, the whole concept of the story is so unique and original and, like, really, really cool. Like, Toy Story, it's like, okay, the toys come alive. That's interesting. You know, Bugs Life, like, talking bugs. That's interesting. But this actually has, like, a really interesting story of, like, the whole tracking, how much they scare people, and like the the doors and everything, and then well, like and then the, the turning mes- it into laughter. The message that laughter is is stronger than than fear yeah. is just awesome too. I mean, it's just a really. I think this one is just like another level conceptually than the other Toy Story movies or other Pixar movies. I think in terms of like an animated movie, and I I get that to an extent they they kind of have like an adversarial relationship, but they're friends. Like, kind of more so than Woody and Buzz, because Woody and Buzz don't really know each other. Right. But, like, for an animated movie, I think these two could have some of the best chemistry. Like, because it's, it's Mike and Sully. Sully yeah. yeah. But, like, it's Billy Crystal and John Goodman. Right. And, like, you fucking on, know that. On you know? screen, it would have been electric. Oh, if they yeah. were actually, like, you saw them, you'd be like, this is the best movie yeah. ever. But somehow those characters, like, embody them perfectly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Like, it's yeah. it's weird, you know? Yeah, Billy Crystal thinks he's a ladies' man, and he's, like, being all, like, and he's actually just the guy that brings the door. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
and Sully's like the over the top, like amazing, you know, scaring guy, but he knows he can't do it out of his little buddy and Yeah, and they had the big personality with the big booming voice right. and everything where Billy Crystal is like a little bit shorter and awkward and you know. Right. But uh, Steph says, I would choose to watch Monsters, Inc. almost always if she – yeah. And then uh, don't forget the corporate corruption they fight. Yeah, there was a great <laughs> – I was like the entire way through the movie, I'm like, oh, man. Okay, so the guy who runs the company is like going to be a good dude. And then the heel turn he takes at the end, I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, I actually liked him. Nope. Like, fuck. Have, have you guys seen the documentary on Netflix about the, like, Mormon – letter bombings no with just find it it's called like mormons and murder or some shit like that find it and within the first five seconds there's a gentleman they interview that looks just like the fucking president from monsters inc it's it's shocking it's shocking (laughs) that a human looks so much like this fucking spider creature that says yes zach yes so there you go Uh, right. right on um so, all right, we've 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 kind of said that, like, The Incredibles is, is really good, but maybe isn't better than Toy Story in some ways. Nemo is right there. Monsters, Inc. is right there. But is Toy Story 1 even the best in the trilogy? It, it, this is sacrilege to even pose this question in this manner. Uh, is it? I, I think so. Toy I, Story I 2 so. is an amazing heist movie. Back to that idea. What is a heist movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, Toy Story Two is is kind of underrated for sure. Oh yeah, I mean underrated, they go they yeah. go out in the world and uh, they're separated, like you said. Yep. So Woody meets the new character yep. with Jesse the cowgirl and Bullseye and Prospector Pete, and then you know the rest of them are out and about trying to rescue him. It yep. also gives a lot more shine to Ham, Rex, and Potato Head. Yeah. Definitely, and then new buzz comes in. Two so buzzes is funny. better than two one. Two buzzes is better than yeah, one. For and sure. aliens. So Zerg, of course, is in it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's more of an adventure movie for sure. Yeah. Than the first one is. Um, I don't know if I that they're pretty close to being equal. And then you have the third one. I. They're all so good in their own ways. But I don't know that they beat the original. I feel like the first one's just so iconic. The Woody restoration scene is amazing. It's really good. And it's the old guy from the first Pixar uh, short. Yeah, the chess guy. guy. Yeah, is the guy who fixes him up, which is really awesome. Um, I hated Sally. I'm just going to throw it out who's there. Who's Sally? Isn't that the cowgirl? Oh, Jesse. Jesse. Oh. Or just when I was like a kid, like her voice. Because it's it, – Helen Hunt, Jodie Foster. No, it's uh, Joan Cusack. Cusack. Yeah. yeah, we're getting there. We're Some, getting yeah, somewhere in there. Sally, yeah. Jesse, yeah, Joni. <laughs> just Sally, Raphael. Her, her <laughs> Sally, Jesse, Raphael. Her voice was like I don't know. Just when I was a kid, like I hated it. So like, I maybe had seen it like one time. I think I was telling Josh this earlier. And in the last couple of years, I watched it a second time, and I was like, it's a lot better than I remember. Yeah, so. there you go. Toy Story Three is. Three, I don't remember as much except for the ending of it. I mean, I know that there's, like, the bear is the, the villain in it, and Michael Keaton is the Ken doll, which is funny. So th- <laughs> so the whole – yes, Michael Keaton is the Ken doll is great. Um, the whole movie kicks off with, you know, An- the Andy's never thrown away his toy. He has kept the the covered wagon chess uh, toy box, his, and now he's an 18-year-old about to go off to college. And his mom is like, I'm cleaning out your room. Get rid of what you don't want. Donate what you don't want or put it in the attic. And even Woody now lives in the toy box. They all live in there together. And it, the movie starts with them stealing Andy's phone, putting it in the toy box, and calling it from the house phone to try to get him to play with them one last time. Mm-hmm. I'm already starting to get choked up. And – what ends up happening is is when he goes to clean up his room and clean it out, he puts everybody but Woody into a garbage bag. And you think, oh, Andy, like you're throwing them away. Then he goes to take them up the steps to the attic, which is what the toys want. They want to be in the attic so that when Andy gets older, he can pass them down to his kids and they'll always be there for him. But Woody goes in the college box like he's going to take Woody to college with him and, you know, the rest are going to be in the attic. Tomfoolery happens. Mom thinks that the the garbage bag is meant to go out on the curb. So all the toys think that Andy has thrown them away. 
Woody has spent the rest of the movie trying to convince them that Andy didn't want to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. They go to the Sunnyside daycare. They get donated or whatever, right? And not all of as it seems there, yada, yada, yada. But this entire movie is Woody always trying to get back to Andy, but he wants them all to be back with Andy. So he's torn between his family, who is these toys, and Andy, who he has this devotion to that the other toys just don't understand. But they don't understand because Woody's his favorite and always will be. And the last scene when they finally get the one last play with Andy. So fucking good. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, the ending so of good. it is just fantastic. Maybe the best ending, you know, to a, to a movie series ever. But the rest of the movie, I I need to go back and rewatch. I don't know that. So are you saying that you like three better than one, though? I think I do. I think okay. I do. Because it's it's. And I'm normally in trilogies. Like, I like Two Towers. I like Emperor Empire. I like, uh, what's another trilogy? Attack of like the Clones. Attack I, li- of the clones. I do like Attack oh, of the Clones. Stop it. Oh, my it's God. Attack of the, I, we know that Sith fight is my favorite. Fight scene we know end. that Sith is my favorite. But Attack of the Clones is when we get to see Yoda fight for the first time, which is pretty fucking That's cool. It's pretty awesome. Um. Say the Last Jedi. I like don't think I like character. the Last Jedi the best out of the. I like uh, Force Awakens out of the, those three. That one's the best one. Um, but I'm I'm traditionally a second movie guy. I like um, the one with Davy Jones in it for Pirates of the Caribbean. Dead Man's Chest. Dead Man's yeah. Chest. I like that one better. Um, but this is just what an amazing way to wrap up something that took you from what we were five and then we were twenty. Right, we were five when Toy Story one came out. We were twenty when Toy Story three came out, and just like how those toys kind of carried along with you, there's just so like there's you're as attached to those toys as Andy is by the end of it. It's pretty great. You guys are just pretending like Toy Story four doesn't exist. I it doesn't yeah, to me. It's so not. strange. It doesn't I just to me. Don't, like, it's so fucking weird. I don't even care. I wouldn't care if Toy Story 4 existed if Toy Story 3's ending wasn't that fucking awesome. It was perfect. It was perfect. I, it was perfect. And they ruined it by crowbarring it back open. I literally can't remember anything about this movie except for at the Disney store they sold the bear and it smelled like strawberries. Yes, that's and awesome. And the nice. fucking in, like, inferno yeah. scene. Yeah. It's the hardest I've I've cried in public in my entire, <laughs> entire life, entire life. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat, but yeah, I will never watch Toy Story four. I it think this deserves I think a chance. It I hear everyone's like, "Oh, it's actually pretty good," but no, I don't want to watch some the movie about the weird forks ed- existential crisis right. and like Buzz isn't even in it. And this Buzz this is the it. perfect ending to it, and it never it should have been just untouched. But they wanted to make more money, so they made another one. I'm. It's it's definitely nowhere near as emotional as Toy Story two or three is, but it's like just as fun. Like Key yeah. and Peel are in it, and they have like fucking hilarious bits. Keanu Reeves is in it, but at that point, it's not even like it. It kind of like also, and <laughs> and this is not great because I I'm I'm really showing my colors about what I think about John Lasseter, but like it almost feels like a fuck you to John Lasseter. Because it's a Toy Story movie without John Lasseter. Maybe. That would be like, that would be, think about how we feel about J.J. doing the Star Wars movies. Right? At the beginning, we kind of had hope. We're like, well, it's J.J., he gets it, he's one of us, he loves Star Wars as much as us, and then it wasn't as good, right? Yeah. Toy Story 4 is Star Wars without George Lucas. Toy Story 4 is better than 7, 8, and 9, hands down, all <laughs> fucking together. Okay. I'm, right. I'm just saying, if you're bored, if Disney Plus takes off any more movies that you loved from your childhood that you can't watch anymore because yeah. they're not appropriate, try Toy Story 4. <laughs> can't watch Aladdin. When they take 1, 2, and 3 off because yeah. John Lasseter's part of the, the yeah. child molesting ring, try Toy Story 4. Yeah. Um, That's all I'm saying. Steph says, I saw it for free. It was okay, but to separate Buzz and Woody, that makes zero sense. I, It does until you remember that they're separated through all of two and three. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. shit. This is like the, this is the thing now. As much as, as much as I like two and three, I think the first one is just too iconic to, fine. to say. 
It's I, better than yeah. I get it. And leading us into this next oh, category, man. which I brought up and I want to ask you yeah. guys about, is Toy Story one through three the best trilogy in film history? And you say that and think, really, Toy Story? But when I think of start to finish perfection, and I mean start opening credits of number <laughs> one to the ending credits of number three, like start literally, to finish. literally though, it is perfect because it starts with the clouds painted on the wall as the opening sequence, and then that's how it ends. They pan up to the sky, and it's the same fucking clouds. Yeah, and I just cry, and I cry so hard. That's why I'll never watch God, number four is because number three so just ended perfect. it perfectly with the garbage shoot and then the last play and it was it was amazing. Now the only other the other only other trilogies I will pose to you guys, Lord of the Rings is one that comes to mind. Does but it the count last, though? why wouldn't it? Because it's like based on like books. Yeah, it still counts. Okay, we're just talking movie trilogies. Okay. Now the only reason I think Lord of the Rings takes itself out is because like the last. 20 or 30 minutes of Return of the King when they go back to the Shire, I think that's completely unnecessary. That's fair. I always end the movie when it pulls out from Minas Tirith at the end. I'm like, that's a good ending. We're done. I don't yeah, need the rest the, of this. And they don't really do a great job of explaining in the movie why Frodo and Gandalf have to go on the boat. Right, yeah. It just kind of feels like unnecessary, whereas like in the books, they do a much better job of explaining it. Yeah, so for that reason, for the last like 20 minutes of Lord of the Rings, I don't count that. Okay. Um, Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy, I think, can be argued up there, but I know you guys haven't seen that one before Sunrise, Sunset, and Midnight. No. That's a fantastic one. But it's not. I don't know if it's perfect from start to finish as much as each movie is very beautiful. Back to the Future 3 is, in, or Back to the Future is interesting because – One and two are great, but three is eh. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is I recently discovered that a lot of people actually feel like two is the eh one. Yeah. And three is really great, which right. I'm, I'm with you, but I don't know if – Zach, do you do you have a preference between two and three? Because I'm a I'm not a big three guy. I think I prefer two. Yeah, same. I was never like really huge on Back to the Future though. I think I've maybe only seen Back to the Future three like once mm. or twice. Okay. Um. So you have, and then I mean, there are. It always seems like there's one in a trilogy that isn't as good as the others, or it right. doesn't like doesn't keep the momentum going. So I, would I say challenge you guys. The only one that, the only one. The only trilogy that I would put to Toy Story is the original Star Wars trilogy. That's the only other one where there's not a downer in it. There's not a down movie. Like I just said, Empire yeah. is my favorite of the original trilogy. See, I, yeah, Empire is my least favorite of that trilogy. Like the whole Dagobah stuff right. and everything. I'm like, eh. I think A New Hope is like – it's my least – almost – Almost my very least favorite Star Wars movie to watch. Wow. It's just, like, too slow. Like, nothing mm. really yeah. happens. Well, yeah, the first one's always got a little more exposition, yeah. I think, because right. you're setting all the grounds. But, but yeah, I mean, there are, there are obviously so many trilogies, especially, you know, nowadays with franchises being king. But for three movies to just go from start to finish with perfection, I think Toy Story m is is very much in the conversation for being the best. You're shaking your head because you already know what I'm going to say? Say it, and then I'll let you know. The Godfather? Oh, no. No, everyone hates the third Godfather. Okay, all yeah. right, all right, all right, all right. I th I Michael th Scott loves that. <laughs> he thinks he wraps the series up perfectly. <laughs> everyone except Michael Scott hates yeah. the third Godfather. In terms of three movies in a trilogy where each movie – holds its own weight and i think I, th I think i'm going against the general consensus here like i said like i think a new hope isn't as good as a movie as return of the jedi is my favorite sure you know? but i think you're I, not I alone there a lot of people yeah. jedi would they would say is their favorite i'd have to go indiana jones okay indiana jones is interesting because temple of doom is a really polarizing one it's my least favorite right but i feel like it's equally as iconic to – see, I think – I'm under the impression that Last Crusade is people's least favorite, the one with Sean Connery. I love but Last that's Crusade. That's my favorite, yeah. like, right. by fucking a landslide. But I think even though I don't like Temple of Doom as much as Raiders or uh, – 
Lost Ark, whatever. Last cr- Raiders oh, of the Last cr- Ark and yeah, Last Crusade. Um, it's still pretty fucking good. Like every time I watch it, I'm I forget like, oh, the monkey brain scene. Oh, short fries in yeah. this one. Like, Temple of Dune to me is not on the same level as the other two Indiana Jones. Would you agree with that? I would. Okay. But I would still rather watch Temple of Doom than I would like A New Hope. Okay, interesting. But I feel like if you're saying that it's not on the same level as the other two, you can't call it start to finish perfection. Because you're implying that it's not as good as the other two. I don't think Toy Story 2 is as good as the other two. Yeah, do you think 2 and 3 are on the same level as 1? I do. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I really do. All right, let's see here. Maybe I'm I'm missing something. So, one that kind of crossed my brain and i don't know how deep you guys are into this but the spider-man trilogy with toby Maguire. yeah but the third one is wacky i i don't hate the third one as much as most people do okay i like the third one i've never seen it like is it the one <laughs> with the sandman yeah yeah and the the famous dance sequence. the random dance scene. yeah yeah no um what about Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, and Evil Dead 2? Uh, Austin will argue for those ones. Well, I think, but, yeah. like, those those belong there. I hate the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man that will <laughs> die on this hill. All right, so I, I, was, I was waiting for your opinion on it, so thank you. Is, are, is your favorite the Andrew Garfield one? I hope not. I hope not, because there's <laughs> only two of those. Oh, yeah. Justin, what? Deep Blue Sea 1, 2, and 3. Well, that naturally is. <laughs> The obvious answer. <laughs> We're talking second fiddle to all those. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm looking at, like, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. I mean, even if you picked, like, three Fast and Furious or three James Bond, like, it's, what I the, think, really hard for three is, in a row. Is At World's End so bad that we don't want to put Pirates in there? Pirates just get so bizarre. The third one's kind of rough. Yeah. Is that the one with the collection? Yeah. yeah. I've never... Whenever he meets Calypso, I always fall asleep. I've, ne- <laughs> I've watched that movie so many fucking times. Yeah. I've never seen past that part. I definitely love Johnny Depp, and I love the Pirates movies. But the third, yeah, it gets like had, the whole Had they made a Pirate Ghostbusters King. 3 at the heat of it, that might put up a fight. Whoa. How did we forget the Kevin Sorbo classics, God's Not Dead? I like the first one a lot. I'm not going to lie. I didn't see the others, but yeah, the first one's interesting. I saw the first one as well. Yeah. I mean, there's but there's so many trilogies I didn't even think about here. But yeah, I mean, I yeah. I don't I don't have an answer for you guys. I think Toy Story is my is where the bar is set for me. Gone in sixty seconds was originally a trilogy. What? Yeah. Uh, death Proof, Death Proof, Planet Terror, and Machete as a trilogy. Oh. Pretty fucking good. <laughs> I don't think that's an official pretty, trilogy. I know, but, but it's still pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I I just oh, like. Man. The Hangover. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, there's a lot of decent trilogies on here, but they all have, like, highs and lows, and, like, they all have their moments, you know, and some are better than others, and it's just, like, uh, you know, what? Star Wars is probably the closest trilogy that's on that level yeah, all the way through. May- I think maybe some people would fight for The Matrix. Oh, there's some there's some people that love the fucking Matrix. I haven't seen all of them. I feel like some people, you know, you obviously love the first one, but I don't know right. if everyone loves all of them. A lot of people love John Wick. John Wick is one I was just looking yeah, at. Yeah, I've that's heard really interesting. like each movie everyone says is better than the one before it. That's right. true. But that's, a, I mean, that's just all action. So if you're like that, then yeah, it's just like all awesome choreography and killing and everything. So John Wick's an interesting one. Um. Mad Max is an interesting one, even though Beyond Thunderdome does get a little wonky there. Um, yeah, it's always the second oh. or third one. Yeah, oh, I found it. Tough. Oh, the Mighty, Mighty Ducks. Ducks. Uh, Fight me, Justin. Mighty Ducks is just as good as Toy Story. I don't. I don't know how I feel because the third meet one's the so parents. different. Yeah, Meet the Fockers. Yeah. Maze Runner. No. Toy Story Three or er, Aliens. Mighty Ducks no. Three is one of the best. So fuck you. Alien, Aliens, Aliens 3 wasn't any good. Right. But the first two puts up a fight. Well, if we were doing duos, you know, Godfather yeah. would probably be number one for sure. But I think if I had to be really honest, I'd have to go with the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm-hmm. I want to say Indiana Jones, but I the Lord of the Rings movies are just 
I don't I don't really think there's anything bad about any of them except for like the last 20 minutes of Return of the King. Right? That's what I'm saying and right. that's why it's so it's hard. Just the last you know what's minutes. funny is I just watched the director's cut for the first time of uh, a couple of them. Uh-huh. And it's really not as good. Like the Two Towers director's cut kind of sucks. Forever. It's like 4 hours. Yeah, but it sucks. Like the yeah. editing is all off and then they put in all these goofy scenes that don't make any sense. Like it's I'm not looking forward to the third director's cut of that movie. I just highlighted it on screen for Justin to look Rush at. Rush Hour 3. Let's go. I mean, it was like an hour and ten minutes. It's so bad they couldn't even <laughs> fit in a whole run time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think – oh. What? Oh. What would you see? So I saw the Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and Inferno. But – and I know this is not going to be popular. And I'm not saying – it's so different than Toy Story. I mean, the books are awesome, but the movies are didn't but translate as well. But mine, I'm throwing out there, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal, and Red Dragon. Oh. Hannibal is not as good if you go back and rewatch it. I used Hannibal's to love Hannibal's my favorite. Hannibal used to be my favorite, and then I rewatched it lately and after we did Silence of the Lambs and I'm like, "Wow, they really ruined Hannibal Lecter in this movie." It gets like real weird at the end where she's eating fucking his brain. He just becomes like a violent for no reason like the serial killer. Yeah. Where in the first in Silence of the Lambs, it's like he's really interesting a character psychologically yeah. and everything. And in the second one, he's just killing people. So I I agree. Like Hannibal used to be my favorite too, and then uh, I re- watched it lately, and I was not uh, didn't love it as much. I think one one that doesn't we don't have a third a third uh, movie for it, but if you put. National Lampoon's Family Vacation, Christmas Vacation, and then if there was a third Chevy Chase installment. There's three. Yeah, there's Vegas three. Vegas Vacation, European Vacation. Oh. There's the regular vacation, there's European, there's Christmas, and there's Vegas, right? Yeah. So there's four, actual, actually, yeah. with Chevy Chase. Oh, yeah, because Wally, the Wally World one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Um, well, w- there was one just here. Scroll back up real quick. Yeah. The Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> I mean, three classic fucking movies. Obviously. I can't even, uh, you know how I like to get on top of my uh, Transformers trash can every once in a while, but the third one's real bad. First two are great. Is that the moon one or whatever? Yeah, it gets real weird. Steph says her ex-boyfriend's favorite movie was Silence of the Lambs, and honestly, that was a red flag that I ignored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that I'm surprised you don't which fuck with Silence of the Lambs. Which character yeah. did he associate more with? I would either be like, okay, great taste in movies, or I should be worried. Yeah, right. she it's, comes it's hard to know. Like, oh, he's got his dick tucked again. Yeah. God damn it. All right. All right. So. Uh, you know what, man? I think... Lord of the Rings is probably the closest we're going to get and um I I I do want to say this though it is unfair that we can't like Harry Potter is omitted from this list. You could probably do 3 Harry Potters, but I don't know that I like which ones would you do? Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, um Dumbledore's Army. What's the Order um, of the Phoenix? Thank you, Order of the Phoenix. That's a really interesting choice. I don't think any. Well, those are the three yeah. with the French director, right? That did those three. All three of those movies have different directors. Oh wow! Well, then I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm close enough to be dangerous. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm do you fully agree with me <laughs> as yeah. those three movies, or that it's not good that Harry Potter is omitted from this? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're all so different tonally and every and with the direction. And yeah. everything. it'd be hard to. I'm sure you could argue for a couple Harry Potters, but that'd be that would be tough. We're all just lucky there's not a Boondock Saints 3 because that would clean up. Not yet, at least. It's those three movies. Yeah, let's fucking go, Steph. Fuck these boys. All right. Um, does anybody need a pee break or anything? Or are we good? I'm, I'm going to need a tissue break after this next sure, fucking – five-hour uh, episode. Right. Uh, Pixar tearjerker moments. Um, what Are we just going to go through them? Yeah, we could talk about which one's worse or whatever, I guess, All if right. you want to, or which one's <laughs> better. So here's the first one, which, uh, Zach, you're not going to know, <laughs> but this is um, Wally has been crushed inside the trash compactor on the ship, and Eva has brought him back to his home in hopes to rebuild him. And uh, it kind of looks whimsical without the sound on, <laughs> but she is frantically attempting to reconstruct him and like that little bug thing is wally's friend um yeah it, it it's a really emotional moment because um we kind of think that eva's not interested in wally anymore at one point 
and she literally you kind of saw the ship there in the background she crashes the ship uh in an attempt to revive wally and there's we're hanging at the moment and now wally's back to life and uh that's a really big emotional moment and he boots up and he goes eva and then you know we all fucking cry okay so. Again, yeah, I don't, I don't remember Wally very much. What kind of music was playing during that scene? Just because for you to hear you say it was it's very or, emotional, it like there's, there's no music oh. through the majority of the movie. It's all sound. Okay. So maybe, she, oh, he doesn't recognize her to begin with, and then it, her memory comes back. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but um, one so of the, Josh's favorites. One of my favorites. Um. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> this is this has got to be it, <laughs> son of a bitch. This has got to be it, right? Um, it's so happy and everything. Someone shot a gun in the back of the church. <laughs> it's sad to the family. So, this uh, is of course the opening scene on their the wedding day. She's from in up. the dress, fixing oh the house. My, I'm yeah. gonna fucking the lose two of my them mind. together. Oh, their chairs. Yeah, and he doesn't oh. paint in the mailbox. Oh, it's Carl and Ellie, th- and those are like your grandparents' things. Yeah, you know, like those old romantic. You know, they paint the mailbox, and he's like. That was the the dream house that they drew when they were real little, and mm. now they're getting older, oh, growing old together. Too yep. stop it. It's too fucking. I haven't much. seen this since I saw the actual movie. It's it's, it's so getting me right now. So rough. Dude. And then it you know it goes as they get older and older, and you know next thing you know. They l- oh well, don't forget they lose the baby. Oh. Right. Oh, Jesus dude. Christ. Right. Yeah, I forgot how long that sequence is. It really goes through like their whole life oh, together. Oh, turn yeah, it off. They're old. <laughs> Don't fuck it. Yeah. He's a balloon guy. He's a balloon cart. It's the guy that sells snow cones over by the fucking tennis courts down here. Yep. And then they're climbing oh, up the hill uh, one day and she and she falls. And then I swear to Christ, if you don't turn this off. <laughs> okay. Uh so it's yeah. So sad. This oh. is uh that one's brutal. Um Oh man, I was just I'm right on the edge of tearing up. Right? Here. Yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, please. Don't stop. worry, it's gonna get worse. Um so, uh, is this Bing Bong's death? No, 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 no. So this is at the end of the movie. Sorry. Yeah, Bing Bong's a character. <laughs> That's a real thing. Right out, yeah. He's like on the verge of crying. Is this Bing Bong's death? <laughs> so, um, the little girl has run away from her parents, and it's at this point that Joy, um, realizes that sadness is okay sometimes because it makes you remember. The whole movie is based around these core memories that make her up as a person, like like hockey family goofiness like all this stuff and joy is fighting to keep those core memories as happy and what is going to happen in this scene is that she realizes that she has to give the core memories to sadness because that's what the kid needs right now is for these core memories to be sad thoughts not happy thoughts yeah because you need sadness to sort of like get over it and to come to terms with it right you know, acceptance right. is part of that, I think. And um, it is uh, it is really emotional because uh, the entire movie, Joy is trying to, like, crush sadness and not let sadness, like, be a part of their little, like, trio or whatever, their, their, their group. And she finally gives in, and that's what kind of rectifies the family and makes everything okay again. And uh, it's just really emotional, really sad. It's great, great, you know, classic Pixar, like, get you at the end crying yeah. kind of thing. Well, any sequence where you're going back through all the memories of, right. you know, family and everything right. are, are going to get you. Um, that one's kind of rough. Although, hey, shout out to Bing Bong's death in, in <laughs> Bing Inside Bong's Out. Bing Bong's death is when underrated. He's like, when he's like, take her to the moon for me, Joy. And yeah. he sacrifices himself. Yep. It's you didn't see it. There's this character called Bing Bong, and he's real goofy, and then he sacrifices yeah. himself. I mean, that just hearing Josh fucking talk about it and watching this, I'm almost getting teary-eyed. Yeah. I'm telling you, Inside Out is better than most people, I think, think it is. Um, it's going to be a rough drive home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty good. Um, all right. So then the next one, I thought really long and hard about the Nemo clip. And I landed on when Marlon thinks Nemo's dead after he's – fought the entire ocean to come to 42 P. Sherman, Wally Bue, Sydney, and he finds out that his son is dead. And he turns his back on Dory, and Dory goes, don't leave. When I'm with you, I'm home. And that is just – and he doesn't care because he's lost any semblance of family. 
and you know it's uh it's probably the most emotional part um i think a lot of people think the beginning too is is pretty rough um the beginning to me just wasn't as sad as dory being like when i'm with you i'm home and right the she beginning, just said it right there yeah, and yeah the scene where uh the one that we were thinking about doing was where the barracuda at the beginning eats mm-hmm. all the eggs and kills the mother and then he finds just a one egg and calls it Nemo. But right. yeah, I mean, book ended by very sad uh, on either end, very yeah. sad moments. But you know what? That one can't be the saddest because the blue barracuda are fucking awesome. Oh, shout out Legends of the <laughs> Temple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's bring it back up a little bit. All right, back to the sadness. Um, this now is Boo. Um, Mike. Uh, oh, I can't yeah. even. This is uh, Boo this, this and Sully sure. saying goodbye. Um, also, I always thought that that lady, the Mike Wazowski, was a bad guy. So when she turns out to be a good guy, I was like, I, how have I not known that? This movie's been out for how long? And people love this movie. And I didn't know that she was actually a good guy the whole time. It was fun. Uh, <laughs> um, like in my living room, I'm like, holy shit. Like I said that out loud. But, um, you know having to give up boo in and you know the yeah and send her back right and, and then they have to destroy the door they have to destroy yeah, the door for good right so the whole movie they've been going in and out of doors and they think they're gonna be able to hang out and sully and her have grown really close right and uh so i think the i'm just gonna get to the the worst part here <laughs> so he tucks her in bed and uh one last and she goes kitty goes out through the door and she thinks they're just playing a game and that is the worst part when she rips open the door and she goes boo and he's not there um and then almost but well, e- luckily a happy ending almost that one. but it's yeah. almost equally as sad <laughs> Zach's crying. yeah it's a sad um, one it's almost Ooh. equally as sad though when he has the fucking thing taped to his clipboard and Mike Wazowski oh rebuilds the door and he opens it up and you just hear her go, Kitty. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got, like that part got Ooh. me. And then just as I was getting my shit back together, they're like, here's another one. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck All this that. time later, he rebuilds the door that they put through the wood chipper and then right. he goes and back she goes, Kitty. Yeah. Oh, man, that was fucking Great brutal. Ending. Hey, we ain't done. We ain't done. <laughs> We ain't done. <laughs> I've cried. Zach's cried. You have to cry. <laughs> this might be the one to All do right. it. So here it is. The Inferno sequence. Oh. <laughs> All the toys in the trash compactor. Just when you think maybe they've gotten out of it, the fucking bear does the he- the last heel turn. This might as well have been a middle finger. Like, there's certain times in PG movies I wish they were allowed to just get one good F-bomb in there because that would have been a good middle finger from Lazo. Um... No, this is surprisingly okay. Yeah. I don't know why. Because I, I think when you watch Toy Story 3 the first oh, time. Oh, never mind. Maybe <laughs> not. I mean, just wait till they when, wait they, till all, they, when they all hands. grab hands. Yeah. Oh. And the music is so good, too. It's yeah. like, dun-dun. Yeah. Dun, dun, like, they know it's, they're going it's to over. their death. And they all. It's very grim. You can see the fear in their eyes. Like, yeah, it's very visceral. It's very fuck? real. But and then all of a sudden, oh, okay, yeah. they accept it. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. I'm a lady. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you just knew Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Trying to make it better. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then you know, like oh. when Woody connects them, like Woody looks up and oh, buzzes it over. Oh, it's over, pal. It's it's bad. It's real bad. Um, okay. But we're gonna go together. But I think, oh god, it's it's bad. But I think the first time I agreed, this was probably the most I cried in public, thinking this is how Disney was gonna <laughs> let these characters go out. Was this? Um, but they get out of it. So I feel like, and the fact that it's the aliens and it's the claw, and oh, it's like right? a great callback, and you're like, this is great. Yep. Um, so I think a big part of me, when I watched it just recently, I didn't cry as hard during this moment because I was like, I know that they get out of it. But the thing that they don't get out of 
I mean, if this wasn't bad enough, like, you know, this right. wasn't enough of an emotional like, gut Like, no punch. joke, three minutes of screen time later. <laughs> yeah. Andy giving them away. Andy's <sighs> final play time. I think I was still crying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> it wasn't like, it was, it was just like, okay, let's give it all I have. Um, oh, fuck. And him, like, him explaining them and... Um, the evil Dr. Porkchop yeah. and One-Eyed Bart oh. and... But it actually has them, like, riding off into the sunset. Like, it as he's playing with the kids' toys for the, you know, final time. It's mm. like, it's just the sun is setting and it's so beautiful. Well, and, like, how he sees them. Like, he oh. sees Rex as this, like, evil, like, you know, this big scary dinosaur, which Rex deals with the insecurity of not being a <laughs> strong right. dinosaur the entire time and... Yeah, just one by one, kind of saying goodbye to all of them. Right, and why do you have to pat them on the head? I know, right? And he puts the change in there. Um, oh. and the boys are down <laughs> bad this episode. <laughs> the boys are hurting. <laughs> the alien, oh, uh. pizza planet, uh, and then like that when he pulls Buzz out, and he's like, "This is the coolest toy ever." You're like, "Yeah." But that somehow you're, you're really just okay right now, bro. <laughs> I'm holding it together. <laughs> Jesus, somehow not the worst part of this scene is the next part when he pulls out Woody because he doesn't realize that Woody's in the box, and um, when he pulls out Woody and she goes, "My cowboy," stop it. Because <laughs> stop it. she she takes him home from Sunnyside. She finds him in the tree. And Andy, when he recoils, when she reaches for him, which is coming up right now, he's like, Woody, what are you doing? And that's my cowboy. Yeah, because he thinks he's going to take him with him. Right. There's a snake in my boot. And Yeah, that kills me every fucking time. Because <laughs> she's like, why can't I have him? Not knowing what he means to Andy. And <laughs> 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 Now we're getting there. Yeah. It's, um... Really? Oh, you're just gonna end it there? Oh, I'm sorry. Here, uh, hang on. Let's get back. Let's get back. Let the yeah. When they're playing, him and Andy, or him and Woody. Oh. Yeah. And like how they kind of go back through all the um, all the scenes, like uh, like when he first gets Jesse and Bullseye, he he calls it like bazooka jane and cowboy whatever and they like the horse can fly and like there's a little like call back to that moment in here even without the the sound and the oh, dialogue and everything it's still so emotional it's killing me using my mask to wipe my tears <laughs> 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 it's um yeah and there he goes oh Girls in Toy Story 4, if you're interested. <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> and he just... And then he just starts playing. Yep. yep. Playing together. <sighs> this is it. It is... Um. Yeah, so, like, he's... See how now he's got them <laughs> flying? Like, that's... <laughs> and the toys just look so happy. That's all in that. You yeah. Know. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Imagine if you saw a college <laughs> age kid running around his front yard uh, <laughs> with a Woody around his neck. You'd be like, oh, that poor kid. Uh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and then, yeah, when Bonnie makes Woody wave goodbye. <laughs> Andy <laughs> cried the whole way to college. Uh. I <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, now all three of us are crying. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> this has been thoughts from the movie. <laughs> yeah, like, why do we have any more topics? I just want to go home. Uh, yeah, but, sad, but so joyful at the same time. Like, that's the beauty of it. Oh, is it's so, so good. It's so beautiful and emotional, but also, yeah, it's. But that's why Toy Story three, when you know we were talking about, <laughs> is it the best movie? <laughs> Has me like it has all three of us like grown ass men bent over a barrel, <laughs> like just like you will cry now. Uh. 
And that was with again without any without sound, any without sound. any dialogue, just watching it. Yeah, very very beautiful ending, the perfect ending. Oh. And that is why I will never watch Toy Story Four. <laughs> Fuck you, Toy Story Four. Also, so my my godson when he turned three had a Toy Story birthday, and he saw it because Toy Story Four had just come out, and he loved Spork. Oh, Forky or Sporky or whatever, and um. His mom goes, he has all of them already. He doesn't have Sporky. And I, like, dead serious, said on the phone, I said, Eloise, I will never fucking buy that child a toy from Toy Story 4. (laughs) I was like, I will get him a bigger RC. I will get him a bigger Rex. I will get him whatever from the original three, but I will never buy him anything from Toy Story 4. Does not exist. Oh, fuck. You want to take a minute? Yeah, we can take a minute. Collect yourself. Um... We're going to take a commercial break and cry. should probably blow the dust off this bitch. (laughs) (laughs) You're looking all musty. (laughs) We are recording the promo for uh, a great depression. And we're doing a sea shanty. This was Zach's idea, keep in mind. And now he's being forced to take every fucking string off his guitar that is not. (laughs) Listen, I'm not great at guitar. I got three and a half fucking playing fingers. (laughs) Fuck you, fuck you. I can always do so much. Jack Black now. <laughs> God damn it, that was a real bad start. Please yeah. come, Josh and Zach with guests on some oh. talking shit and having fun. The Great Depression will come. Thirty years old, but we act like kids. Cryptids crying, all that shit. It's a sad boy's life for me. Sorry, we blame our dads. A great depression will truly come. Josh and Zach with guests on some talking shit and having fun. A great depression will come. Yeah! All right, this is it. This we is gotta it. put the yaw in there. All right, we've wiped our eyes. Uh, we're gonna skip the guess the quotes game, even though I would crush that. Josh, Josh, Josh wins. Yeah, I'll give you. The, I'll won. give you the W. I would have won. Um. <laughs> An interesting thing that Zach proposed is, as we talked about a little bit, this is a pretty star-studded cast, um, but was a voice acting role their most iconic role a- across their career? It's kind of an interesting thought. So we're going to start with the guy who voices Slink, and this is uh, Jim Varney, who I was like, I don't know who Jim Varney is, and then Zach pointed out that he is Ernest. Ernest. Ernest goes to camp. Ernest goes to fucking night school, you know, whatever. Ernest did just about everything. Ernest goes to prison. Yeah. (laughs) Ernest never went to prison, but maybe he did. Ernest dies. Ernest dies. Rest in peace, Jim Ernest watched Toy Story 3 and cries. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of looks like Buffalo Bill here. Yeah, he's not looking great. A little bit. It's a weird picture. Um, You know, I would imagine... Like, I didn't even know who this guy was, but I, if I was like, oh, Ernest, okay, so probably Ernest, probably not Slink. Yeah, I think yeah, Ernest. Agreed. Okay. Um, the next guy on the list, John Rattensburg. Now, <coughs> he is the voice of Ham, but he's also the best Pixar Easter egg because he is in every Pixar movie. He is. He's done one voice in every – he's voiced cameoed or more in every Pixar movie. In every Pixar movie. Really? Yep. 
Yeah, he was called their lucky charm there for a while because they did, you know, 10 or 11 movies in a row that were all massive hits that he was he had a voice in. And then I I guess he's st- – is he still in them to yep. this day? Yep. Okay. He was in Soul and uh, whatever the new one is that's coming out, he, he's in nice. all that. Yep. Well, then, yeah, I guess this would probably be his most well-known thing. His ham. Yeah, yeah for sure. He's also – um he's the original bad guy that the Incredibles are fighting. Yeah, the mole. The yeah, no mole man or whatever. Mole man or whatever. Yeah. That's that's pretty good role, but um, I would say it's a generational thing because he's Norm on Cheers. Yes, he's also Norm on Cheers. Oh well, then yeah, I didn't know that. That's definitely yeah. yeah. Is it Norm the yep. mailman? He's yep. the mailman on Cheers. So well, that's yeah, definitely would be in yeah. the grand scheme of things more iconic. But yeah, yeah. but yeah. I I mean I would know him obviously from thirty from and stuff. over. Cheers. Or I guess maybe forty. And I was over. gonna say we're yeah. thirty and over, so yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Over forty, under forty. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fair. Okay. Um. This one's tough. Who the fuck is this guy? It's Sid. Yeah, but like, who the fuck is this? That's guy? Brink. Eric who's, who's Von Detten. Brink. Eric Von Detten oh, was a huge dude. like teenage heartthrob back there Brink. for a while. Is Brink. it a rollerblading movie? It's the yeah. rollerblading yeah. No. movie. Sorry. He was in Princess Diaries. Yeah, he was in a whole yeah, bunch of yeah. movies. Yeah, Eric Von Denton, he kind of fell off in that. He did. But uh, br- uh, Sid would be an earlier role for him, for yeah. sure, as the voice of Sid in Toy Story. Definitely not his most iconic role, but uh, an unknown one, probably. A great a great undiscovered cameo. I think the other the other amazing part of Sid as as a character, though, is, is he's dramatically underrated. Like – the Sid references as things go through the Toy Story universe, but then also just as you get older and you meet, like, like you're, like, a 30-year-old man, and you see, like, this kid running around, like, kicking toys, and you're like, there's Sid Phillips in real life. <laughs> like, that's yeah. kind of – it's always an underrated uh, Halloween costume as an adult, too. It's pretty easy to do. You just need, like, a pair of Vans, khaki shorts, and a, and a black skull T-shirt. But, yeah, he's probably better known as Brink. Um all right, Don Rickles. There it is. All right, Don Rickles as uh, Potato Head. It's Mr. Potato Head to you. I, m- more iconic just as himself? Yeah, I mean, like Don Rickles is, is, you know, in the comedy world, sort of like on the uh, Mount Rushmore, right? Yeah. But he's also like, he is himself as Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. So they're kind of synonymous. Right. Like, it's his voice and his humor, and it's pretty darn close. So, and did you say earlier the hockey puck thing was like an actual bit of his? Yeah, he said that. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. It's great insult. When yeah. you look at a hockey puck, and then when it's a hockey puck, it's just the funniest fucking thing on the planet. Yeah. Um. So eh. it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, but in terms of roles, like this is the only one I can pinpoint. Like thinking of a movie that I know Don Rickles is in. Yeah, I don't know what if, like if he just did comedy or you know comedy for uh, you know normal comedy or oh he is in casino yeah he's the casino manager. So I would say if if we're going in movie roles, it's it's probably got to be Toy Story. Sure. Yeah. Um, R. Lee Emery, and if you're like, who the fuck is R. Lee Emery? Let me tell you what, because this guy has some of the best comedic roles, like sneaky comedic roles. Uh, I don't know if I'd say comedic. Full Metal Jacket? He's not hilarious in Full Metal Jacket? I'm sorry. I don't think he's supposed to be funny. Oh, well, he's Full pretty funny. Uh, he's the police captain in Seven, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's pretty much All any, hilarious movie. <laughs> any authority <laughs> figure, any soldier, any, yep. any sheriff, any policeman. He's like your stereotypical drill sergeant. And he is the leader of the uh, uh, the army men. What's Toy Story Midway Mania? Did they put him in like a World War II movie? No, so they did a, a series of, of miniature like little one-off animations. Through but the I mean, is it like the, the Battle Story. of Midway? No, that's no. an interactive oh, okay. it says interactive attraction like, in Walt Disney. I was like, they really put him yeah. like back in the army. Well, yeah. he was. I mean, the, the actor himself was an actual drill sergeant. That's why he got cast in yeah. Full Metal Jacket, and that's why he's so good and authentic as that figure in all of his movies, because he actually was. So um, I don't think that Toy Story is his most iconic role, but all of his roles are virtually the same thing, so it'd be yeah. hard, it would be hard yeah. to he's differentiate any of them. He's the coach in Saving Silverman. Yeah. The gym coach? Yeah, yeah. That's the one I was trying to think of earlier. Yeah. So yeah. It, w- it would be hard to pick one for him because they're all 
he's the same guy and everything, yeah. I think. All right, so now we get into the real debates. And I and I said when I was prepping it for the guys when I do in the pre-production meeting, I said, yeah, the big three, <laughs> Wallace Shawn, Tim Allen, and Tom Hanks. But Wallace Shawn's most iconic role is inconceivable, right? Like, it's him in A Princess Bride. Right. Yeah. It's got to be. I think it – yeah, I would I would think people would think – because his looks are so distinctive, too, along yeah. with his voice. So, you know, you would probably think Princess Bride before anything. What else is he in? Notable. I, I feel yeah, like well, – I always think he's the blackjack dealer in Vegas Vacation. Yeah. That's what always yes. – that's what I always think of. <laughs> yeah. But um, – uh, He's also in Even Stevens. He's the teacher, right? Oh, right, yeah. Um, he's in The Incredible. Just kind of scrolling through here. Um, as yeah. far as, like, iconic roles. Who is he in The Simpsons? Uh, where do you see Scroll that? Scroll up. Wallace the Hernia. Hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm sure voicing himself. Yeah. Touche. Um, yeah, I... So here's here's part of my problem is that I didn't even know he was Rex until I researched this movie for mm. this show. Mm-hmm. Um, and Rex is one of my favorite Toy Story characters. I didn't know who voiced it. Um, right. So I think it's it's his looks are more I think recognizable than his voice maybe. Yeah. So you probably probably give it to Princess Bride. I think yeah. you gotta. Yeah. Okay. Although not far behind. Right. Yeah. The next one's interesting because I would – like literally the only other one that I can think of movie-wise that says in the realm of Toy Story even is the Santa Claus. Wild Hogs. Galaxy Quest. <laughs> you happy oh, with that? Galaxy Quest. But is Galaxy Quest – are you willing to stack – and I love Galaxy Quest, but are you willing to stack Galaxy Quest alongside – Toy Story? No. No. And it's when Tim Allen, it's home improvement and the Santa Claus. Right. And Buzz. And Buzz. Yeah. I always think that Buzz I mean, I know it's Tim Allen, but I always think it's Mel Gibson. Oh. Well. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like they Bring kinda have similar voices in a way, in a weird way, you know, I don't know. I mean if we're are we doing only movie roles? Because home improvement Well we did it with with um John Ratzenberg. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Home Improvement is pretty iconic. The most like, yeah. Can we say it's a tie with Home Improvement? Ho ho ho! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think so, Tim. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a good tie. And then the next one, <sighs> T. Hanks. I would imagine Forrest Gump. Yeah, has to be one for him, right? I think Woody is in a conversation for two. Maybe. That's probably fair. I mean, there's a lot of people forget about him in his career with, like, all the romantic comedies he did. Like, You've Got Mail and Sweet Just in Seattle and all that stuff. Well, and and Castaway was so big. Um, yeah. I mean, in a career full of big hits and big roles and big movies. Mr. Rogers, that was a phenomenal role for him, says Steph. Um, yeah. I know it's well, tough. I mean, yeah, if you can't put Toy Story by Forrest Gump, then you yeah, kind of stop the Charlie there. Wilson's War. Yeah, it's it's a uh, he's the most decorated actor in Hollywood for a reason. That's fair. Yeah, you know. Um. So, did we pick Toy Story for any of their most iconic roles? Mm. No. Tim Allen was tied. Yeah, I'm surprised though. I thought for sure. Like, are there are there any that you think are their most iconic? I think initially when I thought of it, I was like, Toy Story has to be some of their like. You would think. And then. No, I don't I really think, think so. I think that just speaks to how star-studded the cast is. Yeah. Well, it also speaks to acting in general oh, is such mile. a you know such a visual medium that when you have just a voice performance, it's hard to compare that with a full-on physical and voice. And that's why, like when Scarlett Johansson was I, nominated yeah. for her, you know, like people had a tough time voting for her for Best Actress because it was just her voice, right? It wasn't an all-encompassing performance. And don't get me wrong. Yeah. If Toy Story has even another voice for one of these main characters, it doesn't work. Absolutely. So it's just as important. Like Tom Hanks, not as Woody, just doesn't work. Doesn't work. Agreed. 
So. Or it, well, it might, but you know, you'll never know. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like if Bob Odenkirk had ended up being Michael Scott, maybe it would have been great, but you know, Chris you'll never Farley. know. Chris Farley was supposed to be the voice of Shrek. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's like a completely different thing. Yeah. You know. That that's movie why is not nearly as funny no. if Chris Farley is Shrek. It might be, but it's hard because Chris Farley it's is Chris Farley. One of the fucking great. Yeah, it might but be, but it doesn't feel like it would work. There's a new Bob Odenkirk show out where he's like an action hero. And I think I it's called Nobody or Mr. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, and I just don't buy him as an action hero at all. No, he's yeah. a scumbag. He's a sleaze ball. He's he's Saul. He is Saul. Saul is I him. I can't see him beating up anybody. Yeah, no. I'm surprised we haven't talked about it at all but have you guys seen anything about the buzz lightyear like origin movie not interested yeah i don't know i think it falls in the same category as toy story 4 and i almost watched toy story 4 i almost broke when i did this i was like no i'll watch some other movies but i'm not watching four it's like ryan gosling or one of those guys that kind of looks like that and it's like buzz lightyear like in like, the Academy. Yeah. Not interested. Wait, is it live action? No. Uh, Maybe it's animated. one of those Disney Plus series. It'll be a Disney yeah. Plus thing. Right, yeah. Okay. All right. Pass. Um, all right. And then we're going to end the show with overrated, underrated. Um, and this is the character, right? You you said that you wanted it to be the character, not the actor. And yeah. I, I, I very much sure. agree with that. Um, I will go ahead and start with Bo Peep. I think Bo Peep's underrated. Well, I didn't see four, so I don't know what her role becomes. Like, I think they, what, what, got a big role in Toy Story. Yeah, 4? she's like a big now. She's like a feminist action hero yeah. or something. Like she's kicking ass and she doesn't wear the dress anymore, right, or whatever. Yeah, it, it reminded me of like uh, whoever the fuck it is in like the newest Terminator movie. Oh, What's Mackenzie Davis. Yeah. Yeah, she's like all like battle torn and like. Right, right, yeah. New Sarah Connor, essentially. Yeah, Sarah Connor. Um, I mean, in this one, she's definitely underrated, though, because she's, like, giving out the advice and keeping the boys in line, for she sure. She keeps the boys in line, and then even throughout the series, uh, in two, you know, she's she's kind of the voice of reason again, and, and then in three, her absence is felt, because that's, like, that's kind of what gets Woody, right, is that, like, anybody's disposable, even Bo, and Woody's, like, choked up about it, like, it's... Mm-hmm. So I think she's kind of an underrated character in, in the Toy Story. Un- we'll go the universe, yeah, I guess. Sure, I agree with that. Um, next one, Doctor Evil Pork Chop. Oh, it's just so good. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, in the first one, he's underrated because he has such a small role, but right. they give him more screen time in the the other movies. The voice of calamity is probably the best <laughs> way to put it. Yeah, like uh, at, uh. I forget what I think it's the third one. He he and Potato Head are walking away. He's like, "Let's go see what we're going for on eBay." <laughs> yeah. And like at one point in time, does does Andy ever figure out that Woody is like worth a lot of money? I don't know. That's a good question. You know what I mean? Like, or do the toys even know? You would think if like you know Woody knows he's getting sold off to Japan. Yeah. And Ham is Google and eBay what they're all worth. You know what I mean? It's just kind of a really interesting little – it's something that they bring up in two, and then it's never mentioned again in three that, like, Woody's this, like, highly sought-after, you know, collectible character action figure thing. It's kind of an interesting – I always like that. Um, this is real dumb, but, uh, you know, Mr. Piggy – what's his name? Like, Mr. Piggy Bank? He's the he's ham. Ham, pig. Ham. ham, ham, yeah, ham. The transition of ham to the evil doctor pork chop makes me think of like in Gold Member where they recast Mini Me with like Danny DeVito or whatever. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, like yeah, it always yeah, makes yeah, me yeah, think yeah, of that yeah, for yeah, some yeah, reason. Yeah. Uh, he he calls him the slotted hog. That's what he calls him <laughs> in the third <laughs> one. Buzz goes, "Shut up, you slotted hog!" And I'm like, "That's fucking incredible." Um, <laughs> all right, Slink. Underrated. You think? Slink saves their ass a couple of times. That's being true. fucking stretchy. That's true. Yeah, I mean, Slink's loyalty to Woody is underrated, I guess. Man's He's best friend. He is man's best friend. And I always – I feel bad when Bullseye shows up because I'm, I'm kind of like, well, isn't that Slink's role? Right. Like, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. He's like Jesse's Slink. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, it's I guess up. underrated. I guess I, he's not that funny or anything. I don't no. know. No. He doesn't really have that. The best, the most comedy he provides is, um, Buzz scratches his ear and his leg goes. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. And then he like falls off the edge of the bed. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh this guy. Numero uno. Like, you almost have to say underrated, but you could probably say properly rated because Mr. Potato Head steals the show every fucking time. He absolutely does. Yeah, the funniest. You know who's underrated? Mrs. Potato Head. Yes. She's yes. great. I'm going to pack your angry eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he brings the aliens back. She's like, oh, they're adorable. Let's <laughs> keep them. Let's adopt them. Let's adopt them. them. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's the whole, the Potato Head, and then, like, in three, when they're doing the escape plan, and he puts his pieces into, like, a wrap so that he can, like, he's, like, flimsy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like, like the tortilla or whatever. Yeah, he's the tortilla, and he's, like, he's like <laughs> swaying and shit, and the bird's trying to eat him, and, like, he's, like, get away from me, you pigeon. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Underrated all around. The it is. Heads, it's, yeah. it's really an incredible thing. Um, This guy. Does not get the credit he deserves. He's clutch. I think overrated, RC. All right. Overrated? He's not always, even solidly rated? He's always being controlled. He doesn't do anything. He's got no personality. <laughs> you know? It's just other people driving him around. He also doesn't show up in two or three. He's only in one. Overrated. No sympathy for the little guy. I guess not. Jeez. Yeah. I say. He rats on Woody. He does rat on Woody. Never mind. He Fuck him. He Fuck does him. rat on Fuck Woody. This bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Without <laughs> hesitation. Like immediately. It just gets your fucking tire uh, slit there, RC. <laughs> there you go. Car bomb RC. Car bomb RC. <laughs> I can't believe that sentence was just said. All right. Um <laughs> the legend. He, he oh. out of all the characters, he gets better as the series goes he shines the most in two but like he gets better as the series goes and he's just it's like whose idea was it like an insecure t-rex yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then to get wallace sean to voice yeah. him it's just like a really neurotic and insecure t-rex you know so fucking good and like his arms are constantly a problem which is just a great on running joke right like he's when they're when they're trying to go up the elevator shaft in two and they have like they're holding on to Buzz's like utility belt. Oh he right. Starts to slide because <laughs> he's not strong enough to hold Tiny on. Tiny arms. <laughs> it was like who put the T Rex at the top of the list to begin with? And he slides down and knocks Will off. Uh, fairly rated. Yeah. Well, fairly rated. Jeez. As opposed to what? Uh, underrated. People, everyone loves Rex. I don't think he's underrated. All right. Everybody loves Rex. You think underrated? Yeah. This is my yeah. godson's favorite. Of of the Toy Story cast, this the, him one. and Buzz are th- are his favorites. So, um, all right, Sid, underrated, underrated by a mile, M- misunderstood. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> not underrated. I think the Pearl <laughs> Pearl Jam song Jeremy is about Sid. <laughs> <laughs> That Sid grows up to be the garbage guy. It's fitting. I don't think so. Because he's trash. I kind of wanted Sid to, like, be Andy's roommate or something. Like, I wanted, like, a better life for Best Sid. Best buddies. We, like, Woody turns well, Sid's actually, life okay, around. Well, actually, okay, here's the thing, though. There's the theory on Reddit about, like, how he has, he has, like, a shitty upbringing and, like, a bad home. And that's why he's demented the way he is or whatever. That's not true. Sally is perfectly normal. But, yeah, there's this also, th- you know, it's like. He's got a roof over his head. He's got his own bedroom. He's got all his own toys. Like, yeah. you know, Sid's actually growing up in a real nice household. He's got both parents. Yeah. So He's just a fucking asshole. Yeah. Definitely, I, I like him. I liked him more in this movie. He's definitely, like, too smart, he is, as disturbed as he is. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Sid needs to grow up to actually be a rocket scientist. That's that kind of, like, been, the fun part of it. That would have been funny yeah. instead of a garbage man. Or even just, like, the cut scene at the end of Toy Story 3 is, like, Andy, like, kind of like somber and then he like opens the door to his dorm room and then sid's like standing on the bed like rocking out or something would be fucking great it would have been great poor sid yeah um what you have something bad to say about sid 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll <laughs> move on. Let's go. Overrated. There, I said it. <laughs> Ooh, it's like the worst image you could have picked of Andy. <laughs> he looks like he just he got a he's face got like transplant. The, he's got like the Brando face. Yeah, the Godfather face <laughs> going on. <laughs> he got mauled by a fucking chimp. Yeah, this is uh, the 1995 Andy. Yeah. Uh, he's got a five head. Fuck Andy. Big ass forehead. What? Yeah, fuck Andy. No. Yep. Andy's great. Andy makes Toy Story. There's no Toy Story without Andy. Well, Andy, Andy's real quick to throw away toys. Just saying. Andy was never trying to throw away any toys. They all got thrown away by accident. Wheezy and all them. His mom threw him away at the garage sale on number two. His mom threw him away at number three. Andy's mom should be on this list. She's fucking overrated. <laughs> She's the one that is throwing away all the toys. She got rid of them at the garage sale. She got rid of them. She threw them out on the curb in the garbage. Andy's mom. Forget her, man. Do we ever see Andy's dad? I don't think he, he has doesn't a have a dad. Is he dead? Or she just got like half the half the assets, so she's just buying toys like a motherfucker. Like I don't. Maybe Andy's mom's like real fucking. Doctor uh, apparently, or there's a really deep Reddit theory that Andy's mom used to be Jesse's owner, <gasps> which I haven't read up on. But my brother was telling me about it. Ooh, like the girl who gave Jesse away. Why wouldn't she recognize Jesse then? When did she see Jesse? At the end of Toy Story Two. I don't think so, because they're all just in Andy's room. And at the be- the end of or the beginning of Toy Story three is all the home videos of him playing with the toys, and Jesse's one of the toys. Uh, maybe I don't know enough about the theory to defend it, mm. but it's out there. Okay, Andy is uh oh I'd say underrated because there's no Toy Story. But without you know what? Him. That does make sense because like why would she get him a Woody doll? Because she loves westerns. And she said, yeah, she loves, she had, like, Jesse as a kid. And she's like, oh, well, the female, or the male Jesse is Woody. Also, she says in Toy Story 2 that it's an old family toy. And if they were all together as a set at one point. I don't know. Jar Jar's a Sith. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Building seven. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I mean, he's fairly rated. Okay. I hate Andy. How do you... <laughs> Fuck Andy. Big old four. I'm shocked. Hashtag shocked team, that takes. team Bonnie. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Bonnie will never give up her toys. She yeah. loves toys so much she makes a Sporka toy. Forget Bonnie. Um, that's not to spoil Toy Story 4, but that's literally what the entire movie's about. Is, is that she sh- doesn't want any of her toys except for Forky. Oh, uh, wow. So, Whoops, bitch. Yeah. Uh, um, Apologize. Buzz. Overrated. No, nah, I love Buzz. He's fairly rated. Uh, yeah, I, 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 when we started doing this, I was like, I'm gonna say Buzz is overrated. Like, I, I was like, I was gonna come in with that take, and then I watched all three movies. And was like, you know what, Buzz is pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> like, Buzz is pretty great. Yeah, fairly rated. Buzz is great. You're mocking me, aren't you? I'll say underrated. You flipped. Underrated. Just like that. Well, because the more I think about it, like, Buzz has, like, more he's got a fucking process Yeah. than any other. He doesn't know he's a fucking toy. Right. Right. So, like, in that regard, like, he really kind of goes through the most shit. He goes through the most shit, and, like, you know, his, like, weird relationship with Jesse as the series goes on. The fact that you can just unscrew him and switch him into demo mode kind of sucks for him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, He's also I think Buzz has like if if Mr. Potato Head has ninety percent of the best lines, Buzz has like the rest of the good lines. Yeah. What's the what's the thing on his chin supposed to be? Just that's like his dimple. dimple. Like his little Tom Brady butt chin. Okay. Yeah. Buzz is underrated. I, I think he is. Yeah. yeah. I'll go uh, underrated. Okay. And then uh the man who runs the ship. Woody. Dude, when I was watching Woody, or when I was watching Toy Story 1 a couple nights ago, I was like, Woody's kind of an asshole. Woody's a giant asshole. Like, he really is. You think he's the good guy and he's right. like the moral compass and everything, right. but in the first one, he's a huge asshole. And I'm sur- I was surprised. I'm like, wow. He's kind of a, he's, he's an asshole the whole way because he's like stuck on his morals. He's not stuck on his morals in the first one. He pushes Buzz out the window. He tries to, like, separate oh, him from Andy yeah, a whole yeah, bunch. Yeah, 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 And then when he 
like needs Buzz's his help. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Can you help me? Right. You know, Buzz, can you give me a hand? Well, he's pretty <laughs> shitty in the first one. He gets all jealous, you know, which is yep. understandable. But yeah, maybe a little overrated, Sheriff Woody. I don't hate that take. Solidly rated? Solidly rated? It's, I mean... Also, like, how good are you of a leader that, like, the toys are lining up to take pot shots at you any chance they get? Like, whether it's the shark wearing his hat or, like, Mr. Potato Head kicking him off the back of the bus. They turn I mean? on like, him pretty quick in the first one. They turn on him yeah. quickly. Yeah. No benefit of the doubt. He rules with an iron fist. He rules the toy room with an iron fist. Yeah, I'd say a little bit overrated, Woody. Because he's so beloved, it's like Woody and Buzz in mainstream culture. But it's like, well, if you watch the movie, he's kind of a dick. He does There's a snake in his boot. That I'd There's be ornery a snake too. in my <laughs> boot. I'd be ornery as well. <laughs> yep. That is one of the best parts of two, when he walks over to the boot and he goes, "What is this?" And then he steps on it and the snake shoots out. And he goes, "Oh, I get it." <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um. All right, we're gonna say overrated now. There's no need to to bring up whether or not they're over or underrated, but. The claw. It chooses who shall stay and who shall go. Daddy. <laughs> they are the most underrated character possibly in all of cinema. Maybe. You know, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, like, <laughs> underrated for sure. They're the best. I see them at Target all the time. Mm-hmm. And I always think, like, you like Gollum in the ring, like, why couldn't it be mine? You know? Like, <laughs> I have one. It should be mine. You don't have one? No. Oh, I have one. Nice. Yeah, the aliens are the best for sure. Okay, I'll buy them. Yeah, yeah. I, um, and so I have I have one that's like a die cast one. It's like it's pretty big. It's not like he doesn't squeak or anything. And um, you'll remember Natasha, our husky that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, the one day she thought it was a toy, grabbed it, and took off down the steps, and I laughed so hard. Because, like, there it is. It's happening. Like, <laughs> like that's the movie. That's, that's, there it is. I was like, going to ask if the one you had was a chew toy for Brody. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah Brody wouldn't be able to. It's, it's big. Um, But, yeah, no. Fucking the aliens are the best. They're the best. Yeah, so good. They have the best lines. They're everything. Like, when in Toy Story 2, the whole time you're, like, you forget they exist. And then when they show up in the Pizza Planet truck and they're the, the fucking what essentially are the fuzzy dice, right? In the yeah. rearview mirror, and, and they're like, oh, and you're just like, that's right. fucking awesome. Always. Always. Every time. Because they're kind of just like stoners, right? Might as well be. They're yeah, like, I guess. Like, I don't see why not. Right. Yeah, they're just kind of like. What else are they going to do in that claw machine? Yeah, they're just hanging out at the pizza place like, whoa. Yeah. Hot <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> fucking claw again, man. Here comes the claw, dude. Oh. Does somebody famous voice the aliens? I don't think by so. chance no. that would be wouldn't it awesome, be great though. if it was like John Lithgow or some kind of like how uh, Vin Diesel is Groot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Toy Story. Steve Austin. Yeah, right. <laughs> Something really cool. Um, Aliens is Jeff Pigeon, also known for. Oh, oh, he's one of the animators. Wow. Oh, nice. He's one of the story yeah, uh, for all the pits. That all right. Nice. If if it can't be like, I don't know, Leonardo DiCaprio or something, like I'm okay with that. This nice. dude probably pulled so much ass. For like oh five yeah. Five years, like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm. Ever gay. sleep with an alien? Yeah. <laughs> That's careful. how you get him. Get you with my claw. There's definitely a picture of him, like. In, like, a ball pit that's just filled with the aliens, and he's, like... In green face. Yeah, (laughs) he's like, this is me. This is... I am them. Uh, all right. (laughs) I'm totally off fucking camera. That, uh... That was... (laughs) That was... Here, let me fucking slide you there. No, you're good. Um... Zoom back real quick. That that was was Toy Story. Our very emotional... We laughed. We really cried cried a lot. Uh, (laughs) We cried a lot. Um... So our next um, our next thoughts from the movies is on St. Patrick's Day. So we're switching up the order because Zach was not comfortable with this movie. So I this is my pick for St. Patrick's Day. 
good. Boondock fucking saints. I tried to pick a line and then I just panicked. <laughs> <laughs> like there's some good ones. There's for some sure. amazing lines. Yeah. Um. So we're going with Boondock Saints for St. Patty's Day, and then Zach will be up the week after that. Um. I am really excited. This is. Our childhood <laughs> in a movie. Well, I don't know if we, we want to call it that. <laughs> okay, our our adolescence. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe our adolescence in a movie. You've never seen it, right? No. Okay. No, I can't make it past the, the fucking the church. The courtroom scene. No, it's like the very beginning where they're washing their hands in the water in the church. Oh. Uh, like, I think the opening credits. I've never made it past that. I haven't that. seen it in a long time, but yeah, you'll... You either love it or you hate it. That's for sure. Yeah, Boondock One or the Saints other. next week on uh, Thoughts Very from Movies. Very exciting. But uh, yeah, so that was the show this week. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, anything else to say? No. We'll see you next time. See you next time. To infinity and beyond.